That's the structure that's going to implement drop. It should return something that implements physalloc on T. <laughs> Or make it an infiltrate. Um, fuck, why is this such a hard problem? This is killing me. Uh, dynamic dispatch requires boxes, right? What about static dispatch? Can we do that? Do you really need phys alloc trait though? Uh, do you have multiple things that will implement it? Yes, I do. Fuck. This is a this is a, a rust brain teaser right here. <laughs> That's what we got going on right now. Uh, okay, so physical memory is something that allows us to allocate physical memory. Like I really, <laughs> like I. I need I need a way of having like a type that can hold something. Foo, and you just you just can't do this right because it doesn't know what T is. Type generic associated types. What? Does this work right now? No. Okay, you can't. Okay, you can't do generic associated types at all. So, I mean, this this is what I want. So I think we do this. Maybe FizzMemP is the solution. It makes sense for FizzMem to be parameterized by whatever its physical allocation looks like. Yes, I agree. And that's what I want. I want I want this. Effectively I want I want a way of expressing like a P which can hold a T, but without defining the T yet, and then saying that this can be a a, a PT. <laughs> Basically I want this to be fixed with respect to FizzMem. And I, I think that's that's the issue. And I mean, I can make this work, I think by implementing new on there and adding that as a requirement on FizzAlloc such that I have a way of sourcing a, a, a type. Um, I just don't understand why I can't concretize that implementation. But I guess because it's function generic. It, I, I, does this help at all? Whoa. But we can't express that. I see. Type applied A, vec A, yeah. Phantom data. What about moving that generic? So 
So I can you make a trait. You then impl that. The fuck? Implement a trait and then implement replace with B where that allows you to vec A as, repra as replace with B TY as that colon colon Dude, yeah, um, I mean, I mean, if we boxed it up, right, we could, we could make that work, but, uh, what's, how does static dispatch work? Uh, there's static dispatch, isn't there? Or is that not in yet? Oh, never mind. Yeah, that's that's literally that. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I expected. That's just normal, normal fucking stuff. Okay, so uh, we have a T. We want to return something as that thing as type colon colon method. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I need something that contains. Yeah, and you can't do the generic associated type. So then this is suggesting that you use like another trait and you impl. What about moving the generic? Okay. Oh my god, this is some crazy typing shit. Wow. Wow. Current Rust casting generic traits down by the type parameter. If you can statically allocate trait objects, yeah, that's what would be nice, right? And that, that's not valid. You can't do that. So a type, and that's going to return something that holds a physalic T. Um, P. Since it's a return type, though, I feel like it's a special case. But I guess you could call it with a strict requirement of what you need, and then it would get pissy. Um, so what if I have fizz alec have a way of making a self new, right? If I do this, um, so here we can do, uh, but I don't have access to a P. Oh, and then sum this up. I d yeah, I, I do. I, I can do that. Yeah, I think this might be the solution. Um, Yeah, yeah, we can do this. This is this is the way to go. Uh Wait, but this means I have to know 
When I call Alec Fizz, I would have to know the type then? I don't know if this does work. How do I... If I Alec Fizz... I guess that returns a P. When I call Alec Fizz... Yeah, and I can't... I. And I, I don't know what that type is. Right? Like, here I can make it. But how do I call Alec Fizz without knowing Fizz Alec, th this structure, which I won't have access to in page table? Yeah. And I don't have that concrete type. Right? Like I wouldn't I wouldn't have a way of calling Alec Fizz because I don't have access to this structure. <laughs> God damn it. Why don't you have it? Because uh page table is under bootloader. Page table can't rely on bootloader. Um, boy, I was not expecting this hard of a problem. Is there a different way to express it? But yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can. I actually don't know if we can. What the fuck? I really just need to have an associated type with a generic field. Um. <laughs> I'm an Haskell advocate. Uh. Yeah, I just want, like, container. Uh, but that has to contain a T. Why is that not a thing? Why is that not a thing? Do I... Do you think that? Do you think I can do this? Does it work? I can use on I can use uh bleeding edge shit. Oh, they're not yet implemented. Fuck. Suggestion from Discord, impl t p colon fizz alec. What do you mean not implemented? It's weird that that's a feature, but then it's just, it's, it just, it just isn't implemented. <laughs> Unstable, and then not implemented. Okay, suggestion from uh, Discord. Impl t p colon fizz alloc fizzmem t for fucking hell. Um, I do think... So this would be on the bootloader side. I would implement t colon p fizz alloc t for fizzmem. I see. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, actually, I don't know if that works. So fizzmem... Impl TP fizz alloc fizzmem T 
Yep, Fizz Alec is T. That's easy. I know that type. And then... P... Yeah. So... What is this thing that trait bounds for... But that's saying I would have a trait bound on uh, Fizzmem. I think Fizzmem P in this case. But yeah, I, 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 I... Suggestion from Discord. I don't know if that actually solves the problem. I think if I make another trait, I, I might be able to do it. Oh my god, you're still up? Hell yeah. Um, how the fuck? Um. <laughs> this is insane. Option PT, maybe. Yeah, but you can't do that. Sleep is for the week. Hell yeah. You just, you can't, you can't do that, right? Because, yeah, you can't make... Uh... Fucking wild, man. I I do under I do understand. Like I I know what I want to do, and I think it's I think I need gats. I think I need gats. I can't construct this. That's not gonna work. Physalic. What the fuck? See you around, Carball. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you had fun. We don't have any solutions to this problem, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not misreading chat or I'm not implementing what the solution is. We're, we're convinced that this is literally not possible to express. Although this is saying that we can do it with using this replacement trait. Accessible via that, but what about moving the generic parameter left once to get that? The replace with thing. Does the physalic new not work? It does not because we would have to know, uh, we would have to know this type up here, the bootloader physalic. Uh, we, we, we don't have a way of doing that. God damn it. Is there really no... But we have to know it anyway since it's the return type of the function. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> I mean, what I'd like is that I can implement the, the, a type here, which is the container type or something, and the container type can hold a T, right? And then when I implement fizzmem up here, I would concretize the type that I'm going to use to fill that in, and I would use the fizzalloc, the bootloader fizzalloc type, thereby passing that type into here. But I can't have an outer type that uses, uh, that has a, uh, that can use a, a function type here. That I'm aware of. Unless I can do it with another trait or something. So what's this thing? This like replace with? So they do this. 
result t. So this is this this is the thing they have written out. It's unwieldy, but it works to emulate gats, which would be type colon colon gat a. Uh, taking the container type as the trait object argument for the new. Yeah, but it need this this function would have to be generic over it. So what's this saying? What's this saying? Now we get vec as replace with b, colon colon result t is b. Because uh, we can vec a as replace with. Is that actually how that works? But I think this has to be on a structure, doesn't it? And we don't know the we don't know the type of this structure, and we can't do the we can't impl on a trait. Unless this is where we implement it. And we implement it up here. Trait fismem t alloc wrapper uh, type alloc wrapper. Wait, what? Desu, did you do it? All right, let's see this shit. Uh, we got fizz alloc. We got fizz mem. My fizz alloc, my mem, fizz adder. Okay. My poor brain. Okay, so we have fizz mem t fizz like I know this works, right? I I know this should work. Um. Oh. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see. I see what cheeky shit you're trying to do here. Well, uh, oh, here you're just making a meetable uh, thing. Um, impl fizz alloc t. Oh. Wait a minute. So this is my memory, fizzmem. And then here, you do that, and then alloc fizz returns a my PA, and my PA Yeah, but in this case you can't have you can't have my PA hold a T, right? I need my PA to be able to hold a T here because that's what uh, it holds. Now I could do erasure using unsafe, right? But my PA needs to ultimately hold a T. Let me see here. Um, Alec Fizz. The problem is this this basically only allows you to return one type. And we can do this. We can do this with unsafe. This this is like always been the back the back burner solution and this basically is that we can um we can do type erasure on on uh my PA and this will just have like the address uh and maybe like a uh... Yeah, we actually don't know the type. Um, but this could this could literally be a mute u8 right that we cast into whatever type we need But we actually don't know what type so the big thing is we need to know the type here So we know how much to allocate right we don't know how large of an allocation because this is The alloc fizz that we've been working with is not real. This is what it will actually be 
it'll be a value, and that value will indicate the size, the alignment, we'll allocate that in physical memory, we'll return that in a wrapped value, and then when that wrapped value gets dropped, we'll be able to free that memory back. Hold up. Fizmem. Is it expressible? I don't. Rust gas. Um. Hmm. Nope, it's not good. Yeah, the problem is I, I have no way of knowing what size to uh, create that allocation in. So I do, the, the, the T has to be on the uh, function. The T has to be on the function at the end of the day. Um... And yeah, the T has to be on the function. And what holds it has to implement a trait. So, um, and we could say C, a container that um, implements fizz alloc on T, right? kind of back to where we were, and that returns the container. But we can't make this container concrete. Discord posted something that makes sense. Am I just thinking about it wrong? If I move a structure or something, or put a trait in a trait, it just works? That's kind of what I'm anticipating. Instead of having a gat, type alloc wrapper t T Wait, can I do this? Uh wait. You can move the T to the trait level. Instead of having gat type that, you can move the T to the trait level. Okay, here. And have type alloc wrapper Oops. So I put T on the trait level and then type alloc wrapper fizz alloc T. But now this only allows me to allocate one different thing. I can only create one type of allocation, correct? I can only have one allocation that holds a T. So when I make a fizz mem, Then you implement multiple fizzmems for one concrete fizzmem. Oh my god. I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, it does work. It works. I think I think so. Um, I see what you're saying. This returns something that holds a physalic T that's concretely implemented, and then up here, I implement it for a couple different types that I want to do, that I want to support, right? So up here, alloc fizz, this now returns, uh, we have an associated type. So we're going to say type alloc wrapper is equal to... Um, uh, this is something that implements fizz alloc on T, and well, 
oops, uh, fizz alloc of t does that. Can we actually just do this? Uh, this is gonna return an alloc wrapper. Uh, and we'll say none for now. Uh, oh, self colon colon. Where is this complaining? Pub trait, uh, uh, 71 page table. Oh, here, this is a uh, self. Okay. Uh, expected one type argument for fizzmem. Uh, in this case, we have to give it, can we give it a T here? Uh, but then in the user side of things, it will call fizzmem T. Is Alec uh, that trait bounds not satisfied? Yep, of course. So we're gonna say um, fn fizz self fizz adder uh, fizz adder zero uh, fn vert mute self this is literally um it'll reference to t in this case we can do uh self.0 it'll reference to self.0 uh, fizz adder this Okay, I mean, this works. We, we built this, well, um, and then in this case, the physical address is just self .zero as pointer. I don't know if box is as pointer. Does not. Um, so we'll just do mutable reference of this as mute t. Okay, perfect, that does work. Uh, page uh, fizz adder as you saw uh u64 uh, we gotta deref that shit okay which one is better dwm or open box i have no idea i've only ever used dwm okay so Now we implement physalloc. We implement that trait for this. Physical memory is all generic. But then in page table, okay. So let's try to do some page table stuff. If we can get past new, we can get past everything. So, okay, fizzmem. So this is the type that we need to be able to allocate. And this is where it all falls apart. This is where it all falls apart, I'm pretty sure. I need to be able to allocate multiple different types, right? And I think that's the problem here is I can't, I can't, um, <sighs> fuck. Yeah. Cause at this point I, I, I could make this concrete, right? I could say it's a fizzmem U8, right? And that works. Um, but now I can only allocate, oh, oh, plus, yeah. That implements that and fizz mem u size. Uh, 
I see what you're saying. This might work because there's only a couple different things that I'll ever actually create. It has to implement fizzmem for these types, and these are all the things that I'll ever allocate. <laughs> Let something is equal to fizzmem as fuck is that the right syntax i don't know if it is exactly um it's something like that Do I need to pass uh, fizzmem manually? Oh, p. There's got to be a better way to do this. That does work, but um. <laughs> Uh, fizzmem u8 colon colon. Can I do that? Uh, turbo fish that shit. Yeah, that works. Alec fizz passed that fizzmem. And if I don't have this, if I say this is a u16, this should say, nope, doesn't have that bound. Okay. So, we need something that's capable of allocating... <laughs> These things. Fuck. Fuck me. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm, I'm a cry inside. <laughs> okay. Okay. Woof. Woof. Um. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but I don't know what I I don't know. I don't know if I can turn So I'm going to need to oh. I'm going to need to also make, I'm going to need to be able to make a physalic structure from a raw address in this crate. So in the page table crate, I'm going to need to be able to take OXLEET and I need to turn this into a bootloader physalic. Um, and I'm... Ah, uh, I think I can do that if I have if I implement a from existing for here, from raw. Yeah, yeah, from raw. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from raw is probably a better word. Um, Jesus. Fuck. Do we even need this Alec wrapper stuff, or is this just unnecessarily comp unnecessary complications? Can we just say T?
Oh yeah, because we need to have that constraint. Yeah, we do have to use the associated type in this case. Okay. Um, is this worth it? Are we going to make the code base better by doing this? I think being able to drop free alloca uh, physical allocations would be really nice. Is this going to make it more complex for the four places we use it that it makes it no longer worth it? And that is what I'm juggling in my head right now. So we're going to have to have a way of allocating a page, right? Effectively, we're going to have we're going to have uh, like different constraints like this. And then this is going to allow us I'm going to allocate a um, something like this. Is it worth committing this sin? I have no idea, man. Fuck. Oh, that token. It's gonna be pretty nice to make it all HKTs, yeah. I mean, if anything, this does give us something to improve in the next rewrite. <laughs> and that's, we always gotta leave something to do in the future. It would suck if we came back and this code base were just already done. Okay, so this will allow me to allocate physical memory. And alloc phys in this case, we're gonna change this. So we're gonna say, some fucking thing is wrapped up in this shit. Do we need that? Associated type. As long as it implements that on T. Yeah, I think we do need associated types. And we're gonna have the uh, value allocate physical memory for a given type. Okay. And when you allocate something zeroed, I think I have to be able to pass that value in on the stack. Uh, I might have to use a closure here to initialize the value such that I can do lazy initialization. Because, so this, right, um, Box has lazy initialization. What, what what do you mean by that? Sorry. Um, is is there like a? There's new on in it. Yep, new. New zeroed. With uninitialized contents, with the memory being filled with zero bytes. Might do something like that. Oh, and that gives him maybe on an it. I see. Huh. From raw. Yep, all the pin stuff. So new zeroed. We'll we'll basically need something like that. Um We'll just say alloc is zeroed, and we'll just say it's unsafe. Ah, uh, actually, we can do alloc is zeroed, and then th yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's safe. Uh, we'll uh we'll implement the trait first. Holy shit. Uh, we'll have alloc is alloc is zeroed. This will return an alloc wrapper, and this will return oh my fucking god. <laughs> uh, maybe on an it. Is that even true? No, it's a maybe on an it on this. Right? I'm okay with this. 
I'm a, I'm okay with this being a maybe on an it. Shouldn't need maybe on an it on Alec Rapper. I think I, I think this might be the only option is you just get an uninitialized thing. The reason for this is this is literally only so page table can get access to this allocator that's different in the kernel and in the bootloader. That's the only reason. Um, the bootloader itself will allocate its physical memory through um, through its like it can just make a box and that's a physical memory allocation. So this is only to expose the physical memory allocator of the bootloader to here. In which case, I think we can just have it allocate an uninitialized type unconditionally. Um, and then here, uh, and I should be able to do core mem maybe on init, right? Nice. Not implemented for that. Yep. Uh, core mem maybe on init. Uh, self Alec Rapper. Okay, so that builds. Um, and then what we can do is fizz Alec holds a box, and a box we can actually can we books. Um, new on it. It's a nightly thing, but uh, new on in it. And this will do a fizz alloc of a box new on in it. Although this is going to panic if we oom. Um, and this is an option, but this should do what we want. It's just nightly. Box have a failable constructor does not. Um, I mean, I'm okay with it. I mean, is this literally all because I want it to be possible to fail mapping something because an allocation failure occurs? Because I'm fine just panicking. Because nothing else is going to work. That will not fail. This we can unwrap. This we can uh, unwrap. Yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. If he can't return none anyways. Yeah, I think... Okay. Please tell me it fucking works. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, 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 this shit. Okay. There we go. So that does all the freeing. I think...
I think in this case, so let's 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 talk about it. Um, maps and map inits. I want to be able to fail if we if the memory is already allocated. I want that to fail, right? So these need to be able to fail because it needs to be possible that you can safely say, yo, that memory already is mapped. Fuck off. Okay. So that means free. Free already works in all conditions. Uh, free's already got that atomicity that we require such that um, it either fully completes or it f fully fails. So what we can do is in translate, uh, translate also is perfect. Uh, translate either succeeds or, yep. So what we can do is in map raw, if it's already mapped, return none. Thus, if it's not already mapped, uh, if it's not already mapped, it's guaranteed that we can map it, with the exception of if we run out of memory. But if we run out of memory, we'll just panic. I think that's just what we're going to do. So after this phase, um, here we'll assert this. We'll assert that that is none. Or... This will fail. I just want to see if this uh, panic comes through, because it should. Okay, it does. Good. Uh, this is going to say, whoa, how is there no PML4E? That's never going to happen. Um, we're going to assert that it's something. Then at this point, uh, okay. After this point, we should never return a partial success. We should um, either panic or return success. Okay, so that means we can no longer use the question mark operator, uh, and that's fine. So this one's easy. We can get rid of this, unwrap, and this will be uh, expect failed to allocate a page table. This will have expect failed to translate physical address uh, into virtual. Uh, into vert. I'll say that for now. Okay, uh, question marks. We've got a question mark down here. This is expect failed to translate um, physical memory into virtual. OK. So we have no question marks, right? We have that. Next one is at the top of the file. Cool. So there are no question marks. There are no returns. Oh, we have a return here. Oh, this is still a failure. Um. We'll do this. Page is already mapped. Bye-bye. Then here, if a table is already mapped, at this point, we should uh, never return partial success. We should either panic or return success. OK. So at this point, there's no more rets. There are no more question marks. OK. So this means that it either returns none if something is already mapped, or it panics if it runs out of memory. It's fine. Quite frankly, I don't know why I even made uh, Alec Fizz failable. <laughs> why are you even streaming at 1080p60 for text? Hell yeah, because we're high quality streaming here. <laughs> okay. So now, honestly, do I just make that panic if it fails? Alec Fizz, why am I making that have a, a failure potential? Why, why did I even design it that way? I think I did that because I wanted to use question marks. I think that's it. I think that's literally it. I wanted to be able to use question marks. I doubt 720p30 is watchable for text. It's fine. We'll be a partner pretty soon, and you'll have uh, quality options. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 
I think translate, we're going to do the same thing. He had encoding for some stream. Yeah, it, it varies. It's Twitch. I think it's just based on demand from Twitch. It's weird. I think we're going to change all of these to just panic if they fail. Alec fizz. Just, you get a fucking fizz adder. Here, you get a fizz adder. We allocate. Alec fizz. We then, we translate it into a fucking address. Okay, and then we need to fix up some s stuff. Uh, 93, uh, this is just the allocation. So we allocate something, we then uh, translate it, we zero it out. If we, if we ever get a physical address that we don't know how to translate, I, I, we're, we're, it's just done -zo. It's It's, it's just done -zo. We'll, we'll panic in those cases. I, I don't know why, I don't know why I went so option heavy. Um... If box, still, if box doesn't have failable, I don't see why you should. Yeah, I agree. I actually like failable uh, non-failable allocations because uh, what are you what are you gonna do when an allocation fails? Like this argument comes up a lot, and I argue this point a decent amount. Um, the only reason I had option here is I wanted to use question mark in a couple cases. That's it, and then it kind of started growing out of control. Um, but I've had this argument with people about. Uh, people say, oh, you need fallible allocations in your kernel. Otherwise, you're going to have a panic when you run out of memory. Well, are you telling me that your operating system is going to function normally when you oom? Like, you're telling me that in your entire operating system, every single allocation failure is correctly checked and will correctly undo everything and unwind all the way back up no fucking way no fucking way <laughs> it, it, it there's no kernel that possibly checks every allocation and correctly handles the failure and correctly returns up and that thing's like yeah you know what you know that you know that data structure that i really wanted to allocate in the kernel you know what i just don't need it anymore the allocation failed and i just yeah, i'm just second guessing if i needed that structure at all Quite frankly, fuck it. I'm just gonna return. Like you're the second you run out of memory in a kernel, you're gonna have cascading failures until a panic. In pretty much every single space, reserve some space for that. Absolutely, that works just fine. Like that's that's one uh, that's one play that works. Is like, for example, in this kernel, I might eventually add a reserve heap of like one meg, and that will be used in, like, panics and tearing down the system, and it's like, if, if I'm desperate and I need some stuff, I'll have this, like, reserve that I know I can never exceed, but anyways, uh, we're gonna change those up, which now means we need to change the implementations, uh, basically anything that does, uh, alloc fizz, uh, and this we can unwrap, because that's const, it's constant. Um, once again, constant. Page size is never going to be invalid. Once again, constant. We actually did it right that time. Okay. Um. This can't fail. We get a page table. We either get a page table or you get a fucking panic. This will not, this unwrap won't panic. I do not like unwraps, but I will use unwraps where it's like provable that they'll never happen. So this is a good case of that. This is perfect. This cannot fail. Uh, this unwrap will never fail. We might get a panic when this gets called because it fails to allocate memory for us. That's fine. Here, these return options and these ones do make sense because we can get a failure if we're trying to map over something that exists. That's that is a soft error, in my opinion. We can recover from that plenty easily. Um, so then, 186.
Uh, question mark on translate. Yep, don't need it. Oh, all the translates now. Perfect. Okay, translate. This can fail if it's non-canonical. I'm fine with that. That's acceptable. It's just completely not a valid uh, address. 232. No page on option mapping. Uh, translate. 232. Oh, this one. Uh, that one can fail. 3.30, that one can fail. 3D7. This one no longer fails. The FizzMem translates are the ones that uh, don't fail anymore. These ones. Oh, we just wrote that code. Uh, okay, now everything in here has been fixed up. So, yeah. If you, if you returned a physical address from your physical allocator that you cannot get a virtual mapping to, there's no way that we can view that memory, I think we're gonna panic. <laughs> like, fuck you. It's, it's game over. We have, a, we have a physical address that we need to be able to access because it's in a page table or your allocator returned it to us and you're telling me we can't access it. <laughs> uh, assert size is greater than zero. Uh, attempted to translate zero size uh, memory. Okay. Uh, try into on uh, expect physical address outside of addressable range. Unwrap expect integer overflow on physical address. Um, yeah, integer overflow on in physical address. Uh, translation done. Okay. Allocate size align. Uh, self zero allocate. I think we we have this one where it can fail, but we'll just say um. We'll just do this. Fizz adder this expect uh, failed to allocate uh, physical memory. Uh, free fizz. Uh, okay, so we're close. Uh, 95, not found on. Oh, that's in some other shit. We'll get to that. Can Alec Fizz fail? This, it'll panic. It'll panic. If we fail to allocate. This, this one will not hard panic because this allocate is our range set. And that one makes sense. Um, this allocate is not like the real allocator for the system. Even though we kind of use it as it, it just finds a set of memory in the set of ranges that's valid. Uh, and that should not panic. That makes no sense because that's a library that just manages uh, non-overlapping uh, ranges of U64s. And we know that those are that's our physical memory. So here, if that fails, if we cannot find something that succeeds or uh, has those properties, then we'll panic. Okay, and in this case, I want to make free fizz uh, fail as well. We're going to say... Um, um, let end is equal to uh, size dot checked sub one and then 
x x dot checked add adder dot zero it's the is the same thing dot expect uh integer overflow on free so if either the size is zero or whatever if the size is zero or if it overflows the 64-bit space then we'll panic Okay. I'm just glad to be having programming problems again and not Rust problems. Okay, uh, 95. Make a fucking page table. 117. Make a page table. 33. That's an MM bootloader. Uh, 33. Mismatch types. Um, perfect. Translate, 42. Oh, we're in the kernel. Okay, yeah, we gotta fix up all these. Uh, 42, translate. Uh, bye-bye. And here we'll just do this. Checked at, uh... Size checked sub one and then x x uh, here we'll do an x checked add pattern dot zero expect integer overflow on uh, physical memory translation. Okay, and then here we'll say uh, assert that the end is less than the window size. The end is an index, so it does need to be less than. Um, and this is uh, uh, physical address outside of a physical window. Success. Allocate a physical address. <laughs> oh, we got them high definition lulls coming in here. That is that a vector image? That's a pretty, oh yeah, it is. Says, didn't it used to be a different one? That got upgraded, didn't it? Okay. Uh, let's just have the compiler tell me what I need to change. Uh, 44. You says makes sense in this case. Oh, there we go. Fixed. 49. Expected U size. Found U64. Uh, maybe I go the other way. We'll go this way. Why not? 91. Something in this ballpark. Return allocate dot map. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Expect failed to allocate uh, physical memory. Uh, for page. And then this will be a um, fizz adder. Mm, we'll, we'll, we'll clean this style up a little bit. Little bits. Okay. 
Oh, the recycled bin. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh, as you 64. Whoa. Yeah, this is this is some weird shit. We got we got some tab problems. So this one, it is actually good that we have failable here because if we can't do the bulk allocation, then we fall back to doing the basic allocation. But that's that works out great in this case. And that makes sense. Physical memory is the only place we're going to do something like that. Virtual memory, that's not going to be a thing. Can you please separate getting the address from returning it? It's what I, That's what I was going to do next, okay? So picky. Oh my god, it fits! It fits to the character?! <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh, God. Right, Fizz. What the fuck? Why are these failable? <laughs> what was I doing? God, I was trying to be so smart. You get you guys let me do this, okay? You guys let me do this. This is on 136 of you letting me do dumbass shit. Not yelling at me, calling me a fucking scrub. It's literally just so I can use the question mark operator. That's why I did all this stuff. Because I was so sick of, uh... I didn't want to do unwrap and expect on all this shit. <sighs> Let end is equal to this check sub to one. And then x x plus I've gotten a lot better at using like and then so I'm not unwrap 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 on every single thing. I like collect all the things into one error and then unwrap the one error. So honestly, my unwraps have gotten a lot better. Uh checked add patter dot zero and then here we'll do expect um Expect integer overflow on read fizz. And then here, assert and is less than this. Uh, physical address out of, uh, outside of window. Fuck! Didn't fit. Uh, on right fizz. Maybe I should make like a validate fizz or something, or like a assert inbounds or something. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Why does that even return anything? Yeah, fuck off. Bye bye. Oh boy. There has to be a bounce checked integer type wrapper. Uh Oh, potentially not now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um There should really be like a it should, there should be this, um, checked expert, this, 
adder plus five minus one times three plus two minus eight this unwrap right I feel like that's doable isn't it uh, it's doable right now given all the types are the same Uh, cause this would be like macro rules. Alright, let's try it in Rust Sandbox quick. Uh, fm main. I don't think I'm gonna use this. Maybe I will. I don't know. Uh, macro rules. Um, uh, checked expert. And this will take, um, oh yeah, we would have to do like the, uh, self-consuming stuff that would then figure out the... You have to do the recursive macros, um, where you basically take the outer part and you would match on like expert plus, and this would turn into a checked add and, and so on and so forth, where it would go down the chain and it would match against these different things and then uh, transform them to the, to the different uh, things like uh, mul and div and sub. And then you would just have to have it um, self-referential. I forget what they call that. But uh, I think that should be doable, actually. Um, I think that would be something really cool to have. Where you just put an arbitrary expression and it would, it would just do the checked on everything. Brackets would need some additional work. Um, I think what you could do... You could consume the brackets. That would be, yeah, you'd probably need an additional for every single thing. Or you would have, like, the um, the thing that can contain multiple. This is, like, the repeating thing, whatever, the repeating expression here, the list of expressions, and then you evaluate those first. But I'm pretty sure that you can do that. Where you would, like, find the parentheses, and you'd go... If it's not doable, it's probably pretty fucking close. That would be a really nice thing to have, I think, in the language. Okay. We're going to get the size of T as U64, check sub 1, and then uh, check to add uh, 0, integer overflow. Um, assert that it's within the bounds. Oh. Uh, Y1. Okay. Assert that that's within the bounds of our physical address. Here we're going to add it and... We're all good. We don't have to worry about overflow here because it fit within the window. <sighs> okay, there we go. Also shit like checked expression, square root. Yeah, I'm fine with... Yeah, I guess that would have to execute the function... I would actually be fine with if they're all, well, I think I would have the checked expert only work on the outside ones, where any, exp all expressions, all independent expressions, not separated by plus, minus, div, mul, would be treated literally as they are, and then only the, like, outside ones, I don't know. Something like that, maybe. Write fizz. Read fizz. Write fizz? Oh, oh, not quite. Okay, what else we got? 119, read fizz. 126. Head. This. Expect failed to allocate physical memory. Let ret is equal to ah fuck. D 
just doesn't quite want to fit. I think in this case I like this. Uh, this is going to be um, fizz adder elk as u64. Okay. Hey! Okay. So now the page table, uh, this, um, if the mapping already exists or the virtual address is non-canonical, um, if the mapping already exists or the virtual address is non-canonical, that fits, doesn't it? Just, yeah, just barely. Uh, then this returns none. In this case, no modifications were made to the page table. If this function, uh, okay. In this case, no modifications were made to the page table. Cool. So map raw is done. Translate is done. Free. Uh, free is actually okay. We want free to be able to fail. Um, all that matters, and we have the note here, is nothing here should crash anymore after this stage. And I think that is true. Or nothing at this stage should uh, return out. So let's look for the question mark. So we have a question mark there. We have a question mark here on translate but that's outside of this, which is our, uh, this is our free. This could only happen if that like, that vert base. Yeah. And that code has already run once. So all of this has already run once. So we know that's fine. And then there's no early returns in there. So, yep, that's fine. Okay, so that's complete. That leaves map init is the only one that doesn't have that. Uh, if uh, if init is sum, uh, sum it'll be invoked uh, with the current offset into the mapping, and the return rip value will be used to initialize that byte. Okay, and then in this case, we will say. Um, uh, if the memory is, if the memory is already, you know what, can this fail? If we just check first, um, yeah. So here's the thing, we can either just go ahead and then undo on error, um, it's really, it's really strange, actually. If, if the virtual memory is already mapped, uh, if, yeah, if the virtual, if the virtual memory is already mapped, or the virtual address is, or uh, at any point over the range is non-canonical, this will return none, and the page table will not be modified. So there are two ways that we can go about doing this. Um, we can either, every single time before we do the mappings, we can make sure that none of this stuff is mapped, or on a failure, we can free what was mapped. The first one means that you have to walk the page table every time. Fn once, no, because we're gonna call it um, for every byte to initialize. Um, so here are the trade-offs. If 
if we validate that this won't fail, this map raw won't fail, we basically have to validate that everything in here is already not mapped and already um, uh, and already non-canonical. So we would every single time you ever do a virtual allocation, we would check that. Or what we could do is we could, and that is the downside of you pay that penalty every single allocation. It has the upside of that if the allocation were to somehow fail, we won't get a panic. But that makes no sense. If you requested to map this memory, I think you're in for the panic if it would have succeeded. Because you're, you want the function to succeed. You're not calling this because you want it to fail. The other option is we could have it just chug along, create the page table entries, and then upon failure, it would free them. And I think that's the best play because it means we only ha we only ever pay the penalty on a failure, and a failure is going to be rare. So our fast path, our non-failing path, uh, will be as fast as possible because we won't rescan the page tables twice. We won't scan it once and then populate it. If that makes sense. So I think that's what we'll what we'll do here. So. Um, So that means once we're getting into it and starting to do work, we need to make sure we never question mark syntax. And it we, we don't. Oh. Well, map raw now panics. No, that still can fail. Oh, I'm just literally not even checking the result of that right now. <laughs> okay, so that makes sense. So, uh, <laughs> whoops. We're going to go through every address, and then at this point, we will say, um, if this is none, we'll split it here. Uh, failed, failed to, uh, failed to map, uh, add must use to all functions that may fail. Yeah. Must use is, must use is, um, implied on results, but not on options. Okay, so we want to um, map raw failed to map uh, undo everything we have done so far. And this is going to be return none. And so right now, that'll just leave everything as is. Uh, fn free. Okay, perfect. So here, um, we saved the original virtual address. Sweet. And we have the virtual address, which just failed. So we can literally just do this, uh, self.free. And this takes the uh, fizzmem structure and then the virtual address, which is the original virtual address. And then the size, which is the virtual address. If we filled on the first case, this would be zero size. Um, oh, uh, let mapped is equal to vatter dot zero minus ridge vatter dot zero and then if mapped is greater than zero um mapped expect whoa failed to free uh what we just mapped this should never happen right this is the um 
all of those things should be valid, and if they're not, we, we, have, a, we have a big problem. Fail to free what we just mapped. Uh, fail to free what we just mapped. Doesn't need to be a fucking English sentence. Uh, 207, a virtual address. Uh, yeah. Minus the original virtual address. And vatter. Vatter is what we literally use to allocate the memory, so that has to be aligned, and we check all of that shit. So here you say, if mapped is greater than zero, um, if we mapped something, free it. Okay. Okay, I somehow deleted that. Anyways, um, uh, free everything that we mapped up until the failure. If the first one failed, then that's going to be original virtual address. Uh, virtual address. Yep, there we go. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So, this will not commit anything. This will not free anything unless it can free everything. This will not, uh, this translate doesn't do anything, it doesn't modify it. And this will panic if it cannot create the entry once it has validated that it uh, wants to do it. <laughs> Whoa there, bud. I just mapped this with my own two hands. Why can I not free this? I like that. Okay, uh, kernel. So let's, uh, let's test that this works. Um, honestly, we can get rid of all this shit. God, I was doing a lot of stuff here, wasn't I? I guess we just got virtual memory working. Um, okay, we're going to get access to the page table. We're going to have this physical memory, which is just a marker uh, at this point. So we have a trait implementation. And then here, let's go right up to that canonical boundary. 7FFF. FFFF. That should allow us to map 16 pages. Uh, and this is actually a really good test to see if we can go right up to the limit. That's 64k, right? We should... Uh, we'll use 4k. We should be able to map this, and this is important. Uh-oh. Oh, uh... We just don't do anything. Woo. Okay. So it's important that we should be able to handle this... Uh, sweet. That means we are able to map right up to the limit. So let's add one byte to that. Fuck yeah! And there you see it, it dumps everything. Failed to map large page. Fantastic. And let's also try this on the other limit. This should succeed. This will make sure that we don't have anything that relies on that not overflowing. Great. Add one. That's now going to cause an overflow. Ooh. Oh, that didn't even try. That didn't even try to allocate it. That one failed so early on that it didn't even bother trying to allocate. But we should be able to allocate this. And that means we should be able to do a core pointer write volatile to this as mute u8, write a zero to it, uh, a 4 1 to it. Of course it's unsafe. Okay, yeah, we're able, to, we're able to map all the way to the end, which is great. Exactly what I like to see. What is as mute? Um, this is casting this to a mutable pointer to a byte. That's, that's basically the same as uh, uh, unsigned char star this.
Okay, so that works now. Wow, uh, okay, so let's go. Oh, we, we don't free anything yet. So let's, uh, let's stress test it. Let mute data is vec OU 128. So we have some bulk operations, uh, uh, five U 128 and we'll do eight, uh, that's 16 gigs. Uh, let's just give this some more RAM.com. Download more RAM. Okay, 20 gigs. So that allocation will be 16. It should be able to do that allocation. It'll take a while, the first time. The VM's paging all that shit in. And then we're going to initialize all of it. And then we don't print or do anything. Uh, print allocated data at p data as pointer. Just make sure that gets realized. Okay, uh, we'll just do this. We'll, we'll go to a slightly smaller size for now. Just let this spew a little bit. It's not one gig because it's uh, U128s. Okay, so this is allocating a bunch of shit. The virtual addresses are going up, as expected. And then we failed to allocate when we got to some, some point in the future. And that makes sense because... Uh, uh, and that makes sense, uh, that makes sense because, um, why again? Oh yeah, we gotta unmap that shit. We don't, we don't call free. So, RG free. Well, we've got, we got a couple frees. Um, uh, fuck off. So, yeah, we, we literally don't call free anywhere. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. Ah, I see. Uh, okay, here maybe would be a good spot to do that. <laughs> Opt alloc, and that's just so we can unwrap or null mute if any of that shit fails. Okay, at the end that succeeds the mapping. We got a virtual mapping. Okay. Nice. Nice. So I just need access to physical memory in the page table. Uh, we can unwrap that. We don't even need an expect because if the page table isn't set up, we're not even executing the kernel. So we don't, it exists. I can, I can guarantee you it exists. <laughs> I'm confident. I'm confident in that. Uh, okay, so here we're gonna do uh, self dot um, brrr, um, page table dot free, and what does that take? The physical memory. In this case, a mutable reference to pmem, and then it expects a virtual address which is pointer as u64 as a vert adder. And then the size. Uh, so this allocator, everything's gonna be 4K allocated. We use 4K pages to allocate all this stuff. So we can just say, um, we can uh, let alloc size is equal to, and we do that up here to align size. Let's do the same shit. Uh, unwrap. It succeeded at this point, so that's fine. So we're going to take the size, check to add FFF, uh, and not it. That's going to be the align size, and then we're going to say line size, expect failed to free virtual memory, and that should never happen. Uh, this is like, um, failed to free, yeah, failed to free virtual memory in dialic, and that's basically like how the fuck did this 
even exist as an allocation. So free the memory. Cargo run. Okay. This is going to be, uh, ooh, oh, okay. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. Physical allocator go brrr. <laughs> uh, it's possible to have, if there's a double free error somewhere, what do you mean? It's possible to have that error. Yeah, I'm fine with a panic on a double free. I'm fine with that. If dealloc is called twice on the same pointer. Well, in that case, it's corruption. I would consider that a memory corruption class of bugs. In which case, uh, fuck you. Uh, you lose access to your kernel. We're panicking. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You made oopsie. You don't deserve a kernel anymore. Freeing this uh, for this many bytes. Really? And free. Uh, so what happened here? What failed? There is no user land. It, everything's only in the kernel. There will never be a user land in this. Um. Uh, otherwise we have more to do. Where the fuck is that failing? Let me just see if it's here, ASDF. Trust me, it's a good message. Okay, we're not hitting asked if. Okay, um. He didn't oopsie and he don't deserve a kernel. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> don't double free stuff. Um, what is possibly happening here? We allocate something. We map it. We effectively forget about it at that point. And it comes back, and it's like, let's go free some stuff. And, uh, and we're like, okay, I guess we could, we could do that. And then we're like, okay, let's free it. And then it's like, yeah, yo, dog, no, 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 no. What are you doing? How? How is that a thing, though? How is that a thing? We allocated it here. We mapped it. We mapped it. Why is that, why is that failed to free? Print, cur page. Oh, we can't print in here. Uh, add the virtual address and the size. It's not that. Check to add those. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what else are we doing here? Validate. We're going to go through. We're going to translate that page. Next page. Weird. Weird. Let's just try this. Let's put some unwraps on some stuff. We'll see if we hit an unwrap instead. 
Okay, it's not those two. I mean, this is probably the most likely place where it's failing. Yeah, unwrap on a nun, on translate. Okay. Uh, let TL is equal to this. If TL is nun, panic. Next page. Next, uh, uh, Cur page is equal to uh, TL. That's unfortunately kind of how we have to print in this environment. Whoa. <sighs> I think those unwraps are killing us due to that. Some. Okay, well, that was a great message that I printed for myself. Thank you. The page. Whoa. Well, that. Well, there's your problem. Oh, fuck me. Okay, so uh, it's still using the memory because we're not actually freeing it now. Well, we're freeing the virtual memory, right? Um, hey, at least I rejected it and I didn't just like do the wrong thing. Okay, so now we do a bunch of shit in here that does a bunch of stuff. We got canonical addresses on canonical addresses on canonical addresses. Okay, uh, so we are now freeing memory. When we're done, we free everything. Uh, and then we're freeing here. Uh, fizz mem dot insert range start fizz end uh end. So here we're going to um let end is equal to fizz dot zero dot checked. Add size, checked sub one. Mm. Yeah, we gotta do that shit again. Uh, we gotta do, um, and then x, x dot checked add fizz zero. Ooh, my hot tub steaming. 
Must be really cold outside. Uh, actually might hop in there. That sounds really fucking nice right now. Uh, we're going to pull in range from range set. Uh, 150 and found an option. Yep, expect uh, integer overflow on physical, on free fizz. Expect. Perfect. So uh, compute the end address. Okay. Now we add that range. So this will now free it. Okay. I think that's working. I think that's working. Pretty nifty. Pretty nifty. Why is it so slow, though? Uh, I mean, it's really not that slow, to be honest. <laughs> it's really not that slow, to be honest. But yes, it's mainly the prints. <laughs> It's really not that slow. So here we go. The first allocation will be slow, and then the subsequent allocations will be faster. Yeah. It's honestly not too bad. It's really not bad at all. To be honest, uh, and that's initializing it too. Really, uh, yeah, we're uh, we'll do this uh, vec with capacity. Um, uh, alloc vec vec, and here we'll do a alloc vec vec u eight. With capacity uh, 16, 16 gigabitos. And printing the pointer should be enough to cause that allocation to actually happen. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so um, IT is RDTSC. Let elapsed equals RDTSC minus it uh, in this elapsed. Uh, this is CPU. Wonderful. Yep, so it drops. The first one's much more expensive, and that makes sense because the... Um, when the VM is created, right, that memory doesn't exist, um, and it pages in those the physical, the guest physical memory in the VM. That's not us. That's because we're running in a VM. If we ran this on hardware, all of these would be basically identical. But these are the this is the number of cycles it takes for us to uh, to allocate 16 gigabitos of memory. Um, and we're not even doing it in a good way yet. So let me get to that. Uh, here's the bulk size. If we up the bulk size, we'll probably see the perf go up a little bit. So this is going like, whatever that was. Did this hurt us? Yeah, I think this is actually slower. What is that? 1.8 million? Yeah, and we're not actually freeing to the free list right now, and that's that's going to be our biggest issue. OK. Uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this just because I can do the math better in my head. Uh, 8.4 uh, as F64 divided by just print millions. Oh, I got to change that format string. Um, 12. There we go. That's better. Much better. Oh, and we got floats in our kernel. Because it's because they're not fucking Linux. <laughs> Is the RDTSC correct in KVM? Does it get paused when things... Uh, I don't really care regardless because we're averaging over such a large amount of time that it shouldn't matter too much. Um, at least for this specific test. I would not trust it. I would not trust it for any measurement under like five milliseconds, but for anything over five milliseconds, it's averaged enough. Actually, I'd say like 500 millis. But since each of these measurements is like a second, it just, even, even if it doesn't correct the the timestamp counter it'll the amount of noise on the system that's probably what you're seeing here is the noise on the system which is we have a ballpark idea of the performance of this which is all we need okay so global allocator um this is going to get when we create an allocation we have to get exclusive access to the page table and we'll do that here we lock the page table we map it and return out and we, we have the lock as short as possible. Here, um, we can move this up. And now the lock is as short as possible here as well. The lock will get dropped the second we get out of that uh, allocate. That won't really change anything here. OK, now the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually free to the free list if it's a 4K page. Uh, right now, we're just freeing anything. So we're going to say if uh, fizz.0 and OXFFF, if it's 4K aligned and size is 4096, else free to uh, actual memory. And that'll grab the lock on free memory and that'll free it. That'll put it back in the like whole the system wide free list. Uh, in this case, we're going to add it back. We're going to just push that to the free list. Um, and where's the free list at? Uh, OK, so you get access to the free list in this case. OK, so here, uh, this will, oh. Uh, get access to the free list. That was an old comment. Okay, get access to the free list. Cool. And now we're just going to, this is really simple actually. Uh, we are going to, at the physical address, we'll write fizz at uh, fizz. And we'll write the address of the free list. And the next entry of the free list. And then we'll do free list is equal to uh, fizz. Um, link up this new page to the free list uh, to point to the current uh, free list head. And then we'll set the free list to equal to that, and I'm pretty sure that should work because uh, DRF free list. I'm just gonna strongly type this just so we know. Um, this should be writing a physical address to that location, and it is okay. So we just strongly type that for clarity of what type is actually gonna be written to that physical memory. Uh, so we get access to the free list. We then write the physical um, address the free list address to it, and then we update the head of the free list to then point to this new physical page we just freed, and that should link it all up. Whoa. 
Wow. That's really slow. Interesting. Why does it keep incrementing the address if it frees beco uh, before reallocating? Because I don't reuse the, phys uh, the virtual address. It's the same physical memory, but different virtual addresses. If the physical address and OFF is zero and the size is zero, or size is 4K, I got access to the free list. Really? Why is that so slow? Why is that so slow? Uh, let's up this bulk size and see if that's now a factor. And let's just go to uh, 4K bulk size. Is this just constructing the free list? Is that that slow? Because it's so many sparse writes. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense because, um, yeah, this makes sense because we basically have to touch every page as we access, uh, as we add it to the page tables. Whereas if we don't use the free list, we don't have to do that. Um, I think it's still worth it because if we actually initialize this memory and let's say it's, a uh, um, yeah, U128, for two of them. Uh, data dot iter mute for each x, x is 50. Okay, so we've got the data here. Uh, failed to allocate physical memory for page. Oh, I want this one. Data is zero length. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think this is just going to be fine. Uh, vec 5. I think that'll do it just fine. Okay, so this is the cost of allocating and initializing memory using the free list. So this is a 2.7.
Now, if we don't have the free list, it's going to be basically the same, I think. So before, it was like four times faster. And in this case, it'll be basically the same, I'm pretty sure. It's actually slower. Yeah. Okay, apparently it's just all over the place. 2.4? The other was like 2.6? Yeah, so this will be faster. Because I walked the pages twice um, for the... Uh... When we use the free list, yeah. it. If, if we're using a free list with the linked list the way that we architected it, uh, it means that every single access, um, or every single time we allocate something, we're going to touch at least that page, which will cause some TLB thrashing. It will cause some, um, it'll cause some cache thrashing, because uh, we're just we we have to kind of touch all of those pointers uh, as we walk that linked list. So. Basically, the performance difference is almost negligible in this case, right? Um, let's see. I mean, quite frankly, if we need to lock... The, the point of the free list in this case is largely that we can... Um, we can decrease the contention of the uh, free memory thing. But to allocate in free memory, so these technically, these alloc fizz only need access to the free pages lock, which is local to the core, unless, unless we uh, miss, uh, in which case we have to go and grab the free memory lock, which is shared between all cores, right? So the fast path uh, is single core. That being said, to actually page in the memory to create those mappings, um, we need to have the lock of the page table, right? And that's why having like a region of the page table that's dedicated toward, to your particular core is actually a really nice feature to have. Uh, when we're working with VMs, we're actually going to be doing a lot of allocations to page tables that are um, owned by ourselves. So, bro, I can analyze code, but I suck at decompiling. What do you mean by that? Like reverse engineering code, reading decompiled output? Now that Gija's public, can like, it's, it's made shit so much better for the public world. Okay. So, let's see. So I think I'm going to make a page table. Mute PT is equal to page table. New. I'm going to make a new page table. OK, uh, page table. So this will create a new empty page table. Uh, and we need uh, PMEM for this, right? Uh, so let mute PMEM is equal to MM physical memory. And mute pmem and physical uh, physical memory. Here we imp implement physmem for that, and this is what's going to be used for all of this stuff. And that's kind of our core physical memory allocation stuff that we end up passing to the virtual memory subsystem to do those allocations. So. Uh, we're going to make a new page table, and then on that page table, we're going to, uh, this is using our allocations. We're going to create uh, map mute pmem 
uh, vert adder zero, page type, um, page table, page type, uh, page 4K. Oops. And then size will do uh, a gig. Read will be true, write will be true, exec will be false. Unwrap that. Okay. So this should oom us, but this is on a page table without having a lock, right? And this, um, oops. Yeah, page table. This is actually the case that I need to optimize for, which is uh, separate page tables. This will kind of emulate what happens when we have virtual machines. Uh, unwrap failed. Um, that makes sense because we never freed it. So in this case, we'll do pt.free meet pmem page table vert adder 0, 1024, 1024, 1024, unwrap. Okay, so we're going to allocate and free from that over and over and over again. That's unsafe. The alloc is safe, but the this is not. Okay. Did I really get rid of my print? I did. Uh, print elapsed. Uh, Twelve point four m cycles elapsed as f sixty four divided by a million. Okay, so we are allocating on a different page table. Okay, so this is taking about 100 million cycles to do that. Uh, that's for one gigabito. Let's bring up these other cores, and we're going to do this via um, mm write oxf eeo 0300 as uh, write fizz. And then we'll write a oxc 4500 u 32 so I'll bring up these other cores quickly. We might have to mark these as volatile writes on the mm stuff, but we'll see. Um, well, that's going to loop forever, but we'll comment this out. Let's see if uh, cores come up here. Oh, and this needs to be a fizz adder. Uh, oops. 46 and 08, I think. Yeah, 08 is definitely where we put it. And, oh, got some friends going on here. Okay. So we might need to mark those as volatile. And I think that's the case, or we deadlocked. We either deadlocked or those need to be marked as volatile. I hope we didn't deadlock. But I'm actually okay with these just always being volatile reads and writes. Because if we're accessing physical memory, it probably makes sense in most cases. Okay, let's see if that brings up the other cores. Thank fuck. Uh, okay. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to have all the cores. Uh, they're going to make page tables. So now, this is going to resemble more like what would happen when we're fuzzing. The cores will come online. They're going to make their own page tables, typically an EPT page table to run inside of a VM, which is going to be independent, and a lock won't need to be accessed because it'll be owned only by this uh, core, or more specifically, thread. Okay, so here they're all running, uh, and we see roughly the cost for all of them. Uh, about the same for all, and we're going to bring more cores online because this is mediocre. So let's bring up, uh, I guess this machine doesn't have that many cores. Is this an eight core box? No, this is a six core box, actually. You making this kernel for fuzzing? Yes, yeah, pretty much exclusively. Um, that's really all my research is fuzzing. 
Okay, so we're actually gonna go back to four cores because this box is not, um, I forgot, this only has uh, six cores. So we wanna make sure we use four cores that'll give them their own physical cores and then that leaves two more for transcoding and stuff. Okay, so here we have, yeah, it looks like about 150 million cycles uh, to perform those allocations on each and we can decrease the spew a little bit. We'll go up to four gigs times four, 16. We give it 20 gigs, we should be fine here. Okay. Whoa. Oh, um, yeah, uh, we're not freeing the correct amount. God, I love that. Okay. So it's taking about 600 million per core, I would say, for these allocations. And now let's see what would happen if we, um, if we got rid of our free list, uh, which we might have temporarily done right now. Oh, yeah, here. So if we want to disable freeing to the free list, we'll just say if false. Um, and now they will all share. So this is about 600 mil. Let's say 500 to 600 mil. Uh, ooh. We actually got, we actually got too much fragmentation here. Um, which actually makes sense. <laughs> There's just too much fragmentation. Uh, so let's go into uh, shared range set source and let's up this to handle a little bit more. 128. Um, and this, 128. Okay. Like that most, that's just for the debug. Uh, which we're not using, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so now we have check stack. Oh, I guess we uh, use enough memory that it wants to use check stack. Uh, let's go into here and we'll just do this global uh, check stack ret. Just do nothing. Uh, bootloader's too big. Let's get rid of this panic shit. That is uh, turning into like a lot of a lot of stuff there for the bootloader. That should be able to fit. We just squeezed it in here. That is okay. Something's really fucked. Oh, we probably ran out of stack. What's what? What did we actually? Uh, 128 times uh, 16, 2k. Yeah, that's actually a decent a decent amount to be honest. All right, we're gonna get rid of this, and we'll go back to. We'll see if we can do. Uh, see if we can pull off 64. Just see if we can make that work. Oh, so close, man. Should I 80? I just want to see what these benchmarks are. Yeah, too many. Yeah, it, there's just going to be way too much uh, fragmentation here. Okay. We'll just put that back. Okay, so yeah, that's just not gonna work. Anyways, um, yeah, we can we can uh, simulate it. We can simulate the costs by doing this. All we're really doing is uh, checking the scaling versus uh, contention, and that's what we're going for. We're looking, uh, we're looking to get a speed up um, due to having a local lock base versus a um, 
global lock. So in this case, uh, LK is equal to core boot args page table lock. This is effectively what it would be. Um, actually, not page table lock, free memory dot lock. Uh, we're not going to want to do that. But we'll do, grab the page table lock just as a proof of concept. <clears throat> yeah, 800. So this will, yeah, this will, that'll get pretty bad with um, more cores. Effectively, we want the free list because the free list allow us to have a small little buffer space where we don't have to grab a global lock. Um, and it really, really helps with performance in that regard. We could make a different free list shape that maybe um, packed as much data onto like each page as it could. Uh, where like the first part of the page in the free list would be the number of free pages on there and things would like pop out of that. And we could basically link together um, each page. Would a page can hold uh, 512 um, next pages? So we could basically have a count, a next, and then 510 pages. And the count would tell you how many pages are in that list on that page. <laughs> and then you could like free from that page, and it would allow us to not have to link them all together, where we're like reading from every page. So we'd have kind of a more bulk, uh, a denser packed uh, free list. Um, can there be a B tree of free pages using free pages? I mean, yeah, but uh, removal in that case is going to be pretty slow. It'll be much worse than this because this removal is 01 and that removal will be uh, uh, log n. Unless, uh, yeah, I, I mean, unless we're like using more of the um, space. Uh, really, the, the, the issue is a cache and TLB issue. The issue is not a, um, it's not a, um, it's not an issue pertaining to algorithmic complexity. It's the fact that we're touching every single page as we allocate and free them. And ideally, B-Tree allows you to avoid cache and TLB. Uh, like, how would I organize the page? Uh, like, I don't, I don't know how that would be, I don't know how a B tree would be better than a linear list on each page where you would have like the number of free pointers on that page. Um... Like, just using a, a B tree is just going to be worse than using an O1 algorithm in every case. And it would be a lot more complex. But I could, I could literally have it where the page would contain a... Um, uh, free index. So this is a page, right? This is a free page here, uh, which is 4K, right? So a free index... Uh, this is a 64-bit, or we'll say free index is a U64. Then we have a um, next U64, and next actually links up to another page, another free page containing free pages. And then here, free pages, and this would be an array of U64s. That would span 
510 entries, right? So this would be 510, 511, 512. And basically, when you want to allocate, you basically say uh, this next would be an index into this. And if you want to free something, you write the free page at next, unless next is uh, two or, or one which would point to itself, in which case we actually have to put this page inside of that page. And basically you could chain together the pages here. You could chain together the pages where next points to the next page of free pages. And then you uh, basically allows you to allocate 510 things out of the same TLB entry. And using a B tree doesn't really change anything here because this is 01, right? We're, we're grabbing next. We're then grabbing that entry and or traversing into the next page if we're out of this. Uh, actually, yeah. So um, the free index would be uh, the first time you free something. So the free list would be null when it's empty. If the free list is non-empty, then what we would do is we would have, um, if the free list is not empty, we might actually implement this. This kind of, kind of sounds fun. Um, so next would basically point to the index, or free index, whatever. Free index would point to the index into this array of what is free um, and the first page that you free I think this works so starts off as a physical pointer to nothing in which case everything's free or there's nothing free the first page you free you'd put the free index this would be um, uh, 509 right the index into this and then next would be uh zero fizz adder zero there is no next free thing and then we'd free something this would go down to 508 and then this would have that entry filled in so on and so forth until we get to the last entry uh where this is zero we kind of need to encode that maybe in a different way where zero is actually valid because that means we can put a free page at zero and then the next one maybe we'd say like not zero or something and this would say that all the pages are currently in use um, in which case so this would be uh, move on to here and then at this stage uh, so this, we perform a free at zero, that transitions it to this state, which then we free another thing. And at this point, we will actually have this be what we just freed. And that would be reinitialized to have a 509, zero, whatever, right? We stuff that in there. Or we'd go the other way and we would have this link to the old list here, this old uh, filled in table. The downside of that is that's going to have some thrashing. So we can descend into the end of the table. Uh, we might have to maintain a pointer to the last entry in the table. Because if we know the last entry, then we can push to the end. Yeah, but we kind of want to use the most recently used page because it's most likely to be in the TLBs. The problem is if we alloc free, alloc free 4K over and over again, we end up like push popping the same thing. That's actually fine because um, that's not that's not our uh, perf issue. We don't have a perf issue if it's accessing the same page over and over again. So yeah, I think that's what we should do is when you create a new free page, you first see if you have a slot to put the page into. If you do not then you will make a new entry and then you'll put the next linking into the previous one. And then you consume 
off of this and you increment free index to consume things, if you consume all of it where free index becomes 510, then you descend into next. The main point, does it help with alloc free one gig? I think so. I think this would actually be huge. I think this would be faster than the uh, range set one, the, the non... Uh, I think this would be the fastest possible implementation we could actually have. Um, I think we're, I think we're going to try this. I'm, I, this definitely works. This definitely works. And we don't have to initialize this memory. We just, the, oh, the only thing that matters is this index. You guys ready for this? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to try it. Um, I love this. I'm so excited for this. This is going to be really cool. Um, we're going to say... If core ID is not equal to zero, CPU halt. All right, so halt all the other cores other than the one we care about. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do our actual allocation here. Vec uh, let foo is equal to vec uh, 5u128. So this is allocating 16 gigs. We don't need the free here. Okay. So we're going to allocate 16 gigs in a loop. We'll do this, foo. Uh, and we'll make sure we print the pointer of foo to make sure that the compiler knows it needs to make that, actually. Okay. Um, unreachable statement, this halt. Yeah. Uh, to fix that problem, I sometimes do this. Okay. So this is only on one core again. This is doing 16 gig allocations and then initializing them. Actually, we don't want this. We want the width capacity. So we'll use use alloc vec vec. And we'll just comment this out. Uh, let foo vec u8 is equal to vec with capacity 16 gigs. So I'll allocate 16 gigs, and we won't initialize it. And this should be relatively slow, right? This is the, yeah, so here, here are our benchmarks. So I'm going to make notes of what we have. So this is currently uh, the current free list. Uh, current free list is, uh, this is 17... Let's say 1750 mil per 16 gigabytes uh, on an it. Okay. So let's say uh, 1750 mil. Uh, and then if we disable our free list. Ah, oh, that's page table. We're going to close page table. I think we're done with it. I think we're boot done with that. Uh, that, we can put that panic back in the bootloader. Okay. And then bootloader mm, we're done with that for now. Free fizz. So here we can effectively disable using the free lists. Um, in fact, we can fully disable the free list by saying this if false and this. So we don't use the free list on either side. So we're just gonna go to uh, we're just gonna uh, allocate memory directly out of our range set. Okay, so this is the best number that we have so far, which is pretty good. Uh, I think it's safe to say it's about six hundred mil. We see it dip a couple times. Uh, I'll actually. I will be nice, and I will say it's 550 mil, even though we've never even seen 550. But I'm going to say it's 550 mil. This is per 16 gig on init. 
and this is the um, this is uh, no free list. Okay. All right. So do you uh, taking bets? Will this new implementation be faster or slower than this? Can we beat 550 mil? It's going to be slower. It's going to be slow. How much slower is it going to be? So we've got 1750 on the current free list, 550 on no free list. What will it be with this new free list model? Okay. 700 and 900. Eight forty one. Okay, so everyone thinks it's gonna be slower. Six fifty to eight hundred. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. I think it'll be faster. But now, now you guys have me scared. Um let's we have the free list running right now. This should be full free list mode. Git commit AM. Uh, we fix, wow, we fix both one and three, uh, fixes one and three, uh, also, um, lots of, uh, VMM and physical memory manager work. We're just going to push it up. Okay. And those issues should be closed now. Okay. Uh, I guess it didn't pick that up. It can only we can only close one per. Ah, uh, uh, this reference is it. And uh, fixed in five three e seven five twenty. Okay. Perfect. All right, so we we now have no issues. We actually fixed everything, and these are some pretty 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 good ones. Uh, cargo run. Five ten. Oh, okay. There we go. There's someone who believes. Um. Six thirty six. Okay, okay, okay. Not quite believing in this tech. I see how it is. Allocate bulk size. Um, I might impl on free pages. I might make free pages a thing. Let's go to uh, kernel source uh, core locals and free pages. I think we might impl that as something. So this is going to be a free list. Uh, we'll call this the page free list. Struct pay. Uh, okay. And we'll pull that in from mm. So this will be uh, use create mm page free list. Okay, and this is going to be a core local uh, free list of pages. And now we can use that in kind of multiple places. And this will hopefully cut down on uh, some code reuse that we have right now. Okay, uh, free pages. So get access to the free list. And then uh, uh, 
yeah. Pub struct free pages. Uh, what do we what what do we call this? Page free list. Okay. And then here, this is going to have fn um, empty self bool uh, returns true if the free list is empty. That's a good one. Um, actually, I might just have this do everything. I think this we might just have do um uh get page get a page from the free list Okay Uh, core free pages. Why am I calling it free pages? Free list. I guess free pages kind of makes more sense, but we'll say free list. Lock. Uh, get page. Right. It's a questionable implementation at this stage. Uh, what am what am I doing? Uh, impl page free list. Free pages doesn't have this field. Eighty three. This is going to be a page free list. Uh, this is going to need to have. That's going to be the head. And we'll, we'll uh, call it head. Page free list new. Is that what you're talking about? Having a new? Pub fn new. Self. Page free list. Head. Fizz adder. Zero. Uh, free list. Ninety. Okay. Uh, get access to the free list. Yep. And then we're going to do free list. And I should be able to just do a um, free. Fizz. All right. Yeah, no free on that. Uh, free page. We'll, we'll say free page. I like that more. FN free page self. <laughs> Craigasm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's a great implementation of free page, to be honest. Love it. Okay, let's uh, let's boot it. Let's see if it works. Um, well, that's really weird. I can't I can't believe that. <laughs> App apparently, that doesn't work. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Get page. Okay. We gotta do some big brain stuff now. Uh, uh, free page metadata. Metadata. 
OXOOO. This contains a U64, which is um, a number of free This is a number of free uh, entries in this page list. OX8 is a U64. This is going to be a physical address of the next a physical address of the next um, free list page. OX10. This is a U64 for 510. And this is uh, free pages. Definitely need to ship it, Emo. Yeah, that could be pretty good. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Desu, what are you doing, man? Whoa, you're getting a little bit out of control there with this whole structure thing. Um, I think we can actually use a structure. Uh, we're going to have to do some unsafe, but like we're doing so much unsafe right now. I'm not even worried about it. <laughs> Unsafe is just my life now. Free list node. Yep. We'll call we'll give it just that exact name. Entries. U size. Next. Fizz adder. Pages. Uh free pages. Fizz adder. 510. Okay. Uh, assert core mem size of free list node is equal to 4096. Okay. Get a page from the free list. If Uh, hey, uh, uh, should be a push and a pop. That's kind of what get page and free page are. Oh, they should be push and pop. Okay. I, 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 I fuck with that. I think that sounds fair. Okay. Uh, this is these are not going to be fallible either. Uh, uh, what do you mean if the free list is empty, return none? Here? No. Here? No. If it's a page, we free it. If it's a page, we grab it from the free list. Okay. Get a page from the free list. If the free list is empty, we're going to we're going to fill in the free list. You ready for this? If self.head is equal to fizz adder 
zero. Everything is going to go through here. This is going to be the core allocator for all pages on the system. Um, I don't want to have things like figuring out where to get physical memory from. If someone wants a page, they ask for the page free list. Um, and yeah, that makes this logic correct of like, uh, I know that I want a page. Give me a page. Like you are the, the, the source of pages. And then this is like, Hey, uh, just so you know, I'm done with a page by the way. And then if it's not page based, it'll go to the uh, global uh, pool of memory, which makes sense because that will allow us to grab larger size or different alignments or, or weird combinations of memory. <laughs> you are the source of pages, bookmaster. <laughs> okay. Uh, if the free list is empty, check this shit out. Um, this. Uh, const uh, free list batch is the batch size that bird just woke up and is now flying into my window i i'm telling you every fucking morning at this time a bird systematically flies into my window every like two minutes i don't know why it likes my window so much the the shade is closed it's not like it can see like through the house and thinks that it's a passage it's not the brightest bird, that's for sure. It does scare me a little bit every time it hits my window. Uh, 4,096. And this is, um, uh, allocate some, uh, allocate some, uh, bulk, allocate some memory to populate the empty free list. And we're gonna do this, let allocation is equal to this. This will make sure that the lifetime of that lock is minimal. When we're done with allocation, we get the fuck out of that scope so this lock can be used by someone else. Um, so this will uh, get some bulk memory. And then here, for uh, and then here we'll assert free list batch is greater than zero and free list batch mod 4096 is zero. Uh, I don't even think that needs explanation. Make sure the free list batch is sane. Uh, 4K aligned and greater than zero. So that means that we can safely do this. Uh, we can say from allocation to allocation plus free list batch. Uh, go through all this shit. Step by 4096 for each page. Self push fizz adder uh, patter in this patter. Okay. Populate the free list as U64. Okay, 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 okay. Allocate once a U64. So we'll use a U64 there. And then this, ah, this is a, we'll just do that. <laughs> In Russia, a bird enters your house. It's a bad sign. That means someone will die. The bird kernel panics every morning. <laughs> it's pretty ack, pretty ack. Okay, uh, populate the free list. So we did this batch allocation and we're just gonna spew those things into the free list. Uh, 
At this point, the free list has been populated. Which means we can do free list stuff. Uh, but let's probably implement push, because this is the hard part. This is, like, actually the hard part. Um, if, if, if self.head is fizz adder zero, uh, check if there is any free list. Uh, we need to start a new free list. Okay, um... Uh, in this case, uh, we're about to do some unsafe, a little bit of unsafe, just a, just a, a, a smidge of unsafe. Um... <sighs> Impl free list node from raw on safe. Physical address fizz adder mute free list node. Blarg. Blarg indeed. Cheese. Um. Do we need to check this? Well, we love pushing and popping. Oh, we should just make these unsafe. Fun safe. On safe. And then if that's unsafe, then we can actually make this from raw. Just do this. We're just going to assume that it's already a valid uh, thing. So we're going to take this. Mutable reference deref this as uh, cast this as a meet free list node Um, okay. Okay, in this case, we need to start a new free list. Uh, let's, we have a page. So we have a page. We're going to turn the page, um, free list entry. Uh, oh, listen, node. Node is equal to free list node from raw page. Okay, so it's going to take that physical address, add it to the base, cast it as a pointer. Uh, we're going to get a mutable reference to that. Very, very unsafe stuff going on now. Okay. Node dot dot entries is equal to node dot free pages dot len node dot next is equal to um uh fizz adder zero 
Okay, so this will be uh, mark that all entries are available. And then this will be uh, terminate the list. <laughs> Failed the kernel. <laughs> okay, uh, ch check to see if there's any free list. If there's no free list, then we're going to make a new one. And we'll do this by doing node. Um, actually, or if we have no more room. Bingo! Now we're thinking with cubes, portals companion cubes uh, if the if the head is null if there's uh, if there is no existing free list or the current one is out of slots to hold pages if there's no existing free list or the current one is out of slots to hold pages um, then what do we want to do then we need to turn this freed page into a new uh, free list node. Okay, we're gonna start a new free list node. We make a new free list node from this page. It has all entries available. And then we're going to terminate the list by having it go to self. Um, uh, root next head head and then self dot head is now equal to um, page uh, head of the free list now points to this node return done uh, and then this in this case or Might as well write node next is null. Um, what do you mean? Oh, we're, we're about to add an or condition here. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Um, we have the other part of this comment, which is if there are no more pages in the current one, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Uh, free list node from raw self dot head dot entries or this is zero and that's just that's just a straight up cast that assertion will get deleted at compile time uh oh sorry uh yeah this is just a straight up cast so this will basically say if if that field in the structure is zero uh, if the head's entry is, is zero, meaning we have no more slots, then, or if we don't have a head, then we will make a free list node from the page that we just freed. We're going to mark that free pages are available, because all of them are. We're going to terminate the list, uh, and this is going to set up um, uh, the next, uh, set the next pointer to the old head. And then at this point, the head of the free list now points to this node, so we update that. Done. Um, oh, and that's already a fizz adder. Okay. So that has handled all of those conditions. Otherwise, um, there is an active free list with room. Cool. Let node is equal to free list node from raw, from the self dot head, uh, and then we'll go to self uh, node, and this is free pages node dot entries. Uh, that starts out as the length node dot entries minus equals one. Uh, Decrement, decrement number of entries. And there's always going to be that, right? Because we check that here. Decrement the number of entries. Then here, uh, 
put our page into this entry as page done. So if there is no head, uh, if the free list is completely empty, there's no there's no head, or if the free list at the head has no room for another entry, then we'll turn our page into a node. We'll initialize it. So this will be the first case. So this will be 510. This will be next is the head, which will be zero in the first case. And for subsequent cases, it will be the head. Update the head. In this case, the head is valid, and we're just going to add to it. So this is the fast path. This is the common case that we'll see. So here, we'll convert it. We'll decrement the number of entries, and then we'll put our page into that entry location. Right? 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 I think the, uh, I think you guys get the gist of what we're, what we're going for now. I think this is done. I think push is complete. So now, at this point, the free list has been populated. So we're going to get uh, node is equal to free list node from raw self.head. I'm confused how you keep track of the current active free list. Uh, what do you mean by that? In terms of like what free list is being used, this page, like which page free list exists, that's put in a core local. Each core will have their own copy of this, and it will be permanently allocated, right? It'll we'll create this once. It'll start off as new. New will create one where the head is zero, so an empty list, and that's in a lock cell. So anytime someone accesses it, they're gonna grab the lock for the core local, and that means that we're gonna have a different free list for every core on the system. Gamos <laughs> is the new Easter Bunny. He's like the Duracell Bunny. He just keeps going and going. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're almost here with this logic. So now what we're going to say, if, if, if node.entries is equal to, if node.entries is equal to um, node.free, pages.len, um, so this is the free list, uh, the, the free pages for this level is empty. Thus, pop the entire node and use it as the free page. So we're going to do self.head is equal to node.next because there's there's this is uh I'm going to say like entries entries that are available that's kind of confusing um available Uh, actually, like, free entries. Ah, right, that's really... Ah. Uh, it's kind of the inverse of entries, but we can rename that in a minute. I, I understand what it's trying to do. Uh, if the... Uh, we're going to set up the head, um, point the head to the next node, return... Uh, I guess technically I want to save that off. Technically, um, is there a swap in, I, I know in Rust you can do a, a core mem swap, but is there like a dot swap that I can use? And I don't think there is. I know there is on options. But I basically want to grab the old value. 
and let's just do this. Let old is equal to self dot head. Um, save off the address of this node and then return old. So head now points to the next node and then we return old. Otherwise, in this case, um, just grab an entry. This is the fast path again. Just grab an entry off the uh, free pages. And here we'll do uh, let free is equal to node.free pages. Um, and here we do node.entries. And then we do node.entries plus equals one. Uh, note that we use this entry. And then we can return free. Is that really? Really? I think that's it. I think that's it. Grab this entry. This will be zero. Increment that. Eventually, it grows to the size of this, at which point we descend into the head. And this is where we grab a lock if we need bulk memory. If we don't need bulk memory, um, and let's see, if we get to the end, we'll end up setting self-head to null, which would cause us to pop again. We hit this, it'd be zero. We'd pull in this bulk stuff. Um, I think this, is, uh, this should work. What OS am I using? I'm using uh, Debian here. I think I have an OS thing too. Yeah, running Debian right now. I switch uh, around a lot between operating systems, but I'm pretty happy with Debian right now. Okay. Push. Unsafe. Uh, okay. Oh my god. Did we do it? <laughs> First try, and it's faster. Take that. Fuck yeah. Easiest goddamn code of my life. It was it was 570 before. Now it's 450. Uh, what was it? It was a uh, 570 before. 20 20 percent speed up. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Ah, oh, that's so good. God damn! To 510? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is beautiful. Look at that free list implementation. Fucking gorgeous. Now, I don't know if Rust biases the true condition as the common path. Um... So I don't know if I should have the fast path be on the uh, true case on an if. I don't know if Rust does stuff like that where like this would be the likely and this would be the unlikely path. How much space are you utilizing for that free list? Um, it, it varies. Disassemble it and see. Yeah. Uh, object dump m intel d uh, build kernel x 64 PC MSVC kernel uh, kernel that exe vim dash uh, pop fuck it got inlined 
pretty hard. Okay. Alec Fizz. Uh, uh, if that matches, if it's not equal, not equal, this is the fall through. Here we're grabbing the lock on the, um, we're grabbing the lock on the free list here, waiting to get access to it. Um, here we're adding 20. This is to deref. Uh, this is derefing that free list structure. This is getting the address. We're going to test. Racks to see if it's zero. This is okay. So this is checking if the uh, racks in this case is the zero case. If it's if it's non-zero, then we jump. Otherwise, this is the condition where yeah. So this path is going to be where we execute. Uh, this is our fast path. So here we're looking up that, um, yeah, we are branching to the fast path here. This is comparing uh, 1FE, that's the 510. Um, looking up that entry, checking to see if it's, uh, if it's not equal to that, then if it's not equal to 510, then we're going here. It does look like that is the case. Uh, and then that's jumping above equal. Okay, uh, yeah, it does look like we might be able to eke out a smidge of performance uh, if we change these shapes. So, if the free list... Uh, let's just do this one first, because this one's easy. If it's... If the node entries is less than that... Than this. Otherwise, the free pages. Uh, otherwise, it's greater than or equal to. In which case, it's equal to, and we do that. Um, it's unlikely this really does anything for the perf, but it's it's possible it's non-zero. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty hard to detect this, especially in a VM environment when there's just so much noise going on on the system. Um, but, yeah. And I think I want to change the name of entries. What's a good name for this? Um, free slots. And we'll put those next to each other for the, um, so this is a physical address of the next free entry, a physical address of the next free entry, uh, next free, um, free list node, uh, could be zero if the, uh, list terminates. Okay. And then here we're going to say, uh, number of free, uh, number of available slots in free pages. Uh, the pages are always allocated from 500 uh, offset 509 down to uh, zero. Thus if um, thus if free slots is 10, that means that uh, free pages zero to nine are invalid and free pages 10 dot dot are uh, valid physical addresses of free pages. Okay, I think that's pretty descriptive. Uh, and this is... Uh, Physical addresses of free pages um, referenced by free. Uh, yeah, physical addresses of free pages. Everything in here is uninitialized until we fill it in. Entries 
um, no dot uh, entries. We'll just do this. We'll go through and make sure we replace some free slots. Free slots. Free slots. Free slots. Free slots. Uh, mark that all slots are free. Decrement number of uh, available slots. And then free slots. Okay, beautiful. There's something like likely unlikely in Rust. I don't think so. There have been a couple RFCs for it, and people are like, "What? It, uh, why are you trying to like hyper optimize shit like that?" Um, I think the consensus to it, the consensus is to allow the compiler to make those decisions because the compiler is probably smarter than you. That's a, that's basically what I've read in most of the things, and I I kind of agree. To be honest, it's slow. It 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 hasn't changed. We just changed a name, right? It's it's based on the different states. So if we keep rebooting it, we'll probably get some that are faster and some that are slower. Um, and that's gonna rely on just kind of the pages, unless it's because we changed these two fields around. But we could actually not reperceive that structure. We don't have to reperceive it. Um, as long as it's always 4K in size, we can let Rust figure out how to align everything and where to put shit, right? So, as long as it fits in 4K, Rust can do whatever it wants to move these things around to wherever it, it thinks is a better uh, place. So this is a uh, free a node in the free list representing a node in the free list uh, representing um, this is at the metadata on a freed page present in the free list we don't just directly uh, directly link the pages together instead we use the entire uh, four kilobytes of the uh, freed page to hold a list of pages. This uh, dramatically, I dramatically, 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 dramatic, dramatically, dramatically. I don't fucking know. Uh, this dramatically reduces the um, here significantly. Reduces the uh, cost of uh, reduces the thrashing of TLBs a thrashing of TLBs uh, during uh, page allocations, which are largely what everything uh, everything in the kernel is built around. This significantly re reduces the thrashing of TLBs uh, during page allocations, which are largely what everything in the kernel is built around. Um, yeah. Uh, this was about a 4x speed up when allocating 16 gigabytes uh, virtual allocations using four uh, kilobyte pages um, compared to using a linked list of free nodes. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's accurate, isn't it? Okay, read fizz. Uh, yeah, so... It's technically dead code. Are we ever going to use read fizz? Ah, eventually we probably will. So I might just mark this um, allow dead code. Uh, just so we can keep that around. Okay. Yeah, that looks great. So now 
obviously there's gonna be, if we get rid of this halt, if we allow all the cores to be doing the allocations, um, there's gonna be pretty significant contention here. So, I expect that these will be relatively slow. They're all gonna have their own free lists, which is great. Uh, fail to allocate physical memory. Yeah, it turns out we're gonna have issues having four cores allocating 16 gigs. So we'll have four cores allocate four gigs. <laughs> 4x, 4x per core, yeah. Um, yeah, this looks about right. Uh, this actually makes sense. Uh, it's basically, this one's waiting to get access to the free list while all of them are. Uh, uh, basically, this one, the 2400 loses the race so hard that it is the last of the four cores to do its allocation. So it times the entirety of all the others. This actually tells us uh, the, like, sum times and the IPC of the lock, the... the uh, the time it takes for the lock to move between the cores in terms of awareness. Um, that being said, this is only if we're allocating on the um, if we're allocating in the global space, right? If we're allocating in the global space, then there's still a lock that has to be obtained for the page tables. However, if we had separate page tables or we were cores that had uh, virtual machines that had their own page tables that we didn't have to get a lock to, then we would have linear scaling and all of them would get 450. Uh, don't we have a per core free list? We, have a, we do have a per core free list, but currently we're doing a VEC allocation, which is allocating in the global address space, which all of the cores share, and thus we have to lock the page table to make sure that two cores don't end up updating the page table uh, at the same time, right? And that's why two days ago when we started working on some of this stuff, I talked about how it is nice to sometimes have a way to uh, like reserve a region in the uh, page table that is exclusive to your core. Um, that then can bypass that lock because we can guarantee, uh, we can kind of guarantee that it's exclusive for that core. Uh, but that's, honestly, that's something I could implement relatively easily. Uh, I could have it where the page table allows me to like shave or carve or reserve memory. And I could reserve like two terabytes of memory for each core and then it can modify that without a lock because it like took a lock at runtime of that section. This is a good point to commit code, I agree. Cargo, uh, cargo run clean, cargo run. At this point, we have a um, uh, am uh, made the page free list 4x faster. Okay, made the page free list 4x faster. Get push. Okay, and what is that build time from, for a clean build? Oh yeah, beautiful. No third party dependencies, no bugs. That is great, look at that boot time too. Woo! That is a great boot time. Um, wow. Okay, and let's see what happens. Two seconds to build. I mean, I could make them build in parallel because the, the bootloader and kernel don't rely on each other. Wow, we are like pushing our luck there. I think that's just because we have panic. And we have prints. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the prints and the bootloader. Um, actually, I can do that here. Yeah. Whoa. Right stir. Huh.
61. That utilization seems very high. Uh, all of these are prints, so those should get removed. Th okay, that should not have an effect. Um, that means the... Yeah, because format. Some things are doing format. Anyways, as long as we fit, it's fine. But this is, like, really pushing it. Um, that being said, we have ways to get that utilization down to 50% if we need to. But, um... Yeah, what do we print here? Commenting this out did what? That brings us down quite a bit. There's still a lot of format code. Basic, basically, if anything does uh, format anywhere, anywhere, uh, we're gonna have a lot of dependencies. Even just the act of like having this might pull in a lot of. Okay, that didn't have an effect. Okay, good. It shouldn't. Um. But not having this print should. That'll throw the. So the problem is the args will still be created, in this case. And I think that's the problem, is that things will create the arguments and then they won't get used. And I think they're not getting uh, DCE'd. Object dump uh, m intel d build bootloader i release bootloader exe. And dash. Maybe it's, oh, we added a lot of code with the page table stuff. Yeah, I think the page table code just got significantly larger when we added the uh, free stuff. Then we have, we have some iterators, some step by stuff. Uh, some vector stuff. But honestly, that, that wasn't too bad. What's this thing? Wow, this is huge. Oh, this is like... Oh, that's entry. So this is like the whole program. Uh, we have more iterator step by, some option, unwrap, we're kind of getting templated on some shit, that's hurting us a little bit. Uh, core format, okay, we got a lot of format stuff still. Right character, right character. Yeah, honestly, looks pretty fair. Looks pretty fair, to be honest. Step by has an atrocious implementation. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm probably losing, like, 10% of my code base to that. <laughs> um, 
core format pad. Yeah, and we're getting those format things from the source panic. I'm guessing it's this stuff here. If we just had this halt, right? And we don't really need this stuff in the bootloader. The bootloader can... Okay, yep. That gets us down to 17k. Page table free actually is a pretty big function. Honestly, iterators in general um, have some pretty bad uh, code gen in Rust. Index. Let me actually try a couple, um, let's try op level, uh, three, 72, op level two, 60, Ooh. Fifty-two six. 54, wow, opt S is better than opt Z? Doesn't the compiler output contain uh, source line numbers? So you can see which uh, source lines. It should, but um, I guess those like symbols aren't being recognized by object dump. It seems like opt S is better for some reason. Let's see how it performs when I pull this stuff in. This is everything now. It's pretty much the same. Fair on clean. Okay. And that's what's currently up on Git. Okay, so now what we should be able to do is I think we have this code. where we use different page tables. Yep, that's when we first theorized everything. And here we're gonna do four gigs. Uh, history C, cargo run. So here we're just going to have all the cores allocate in, in their separate uh, tables. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. That is really good. That is so good. That is so good. And this is fully freeing those tables, which is pretty cool. All right, all right. So now that we have a fast thing, a fast free list, well, the batch only matters for the first one. After the, after the, uh, it only matters for the like first allocation. At this stage, it's already been kind of worked in. Why does it sometimes jump to 400? Is the memory lock? Nah. Um. Oh yeah, let's throw, let's throw free in here. Let's see the cost of both the alloc and the free combined. Okay, that looks about right. That's because our free implementation sucks. What's the speed on the serial link? I, I don't know. It's emulated, so it's likely not actually a real speed. Um, kernel, 
It, we're not really bottlenecking on prints in this case. Like, I'm pretty sure we could go to this and it's just going to spew more stuff. Oh, unwrap on a nun. Yep, because I was changing shit. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that was the point, is that I was changing that? Okay, uh, we gotta change this one, that's the problem. It should be able to handle a pretty, yeah, like, this handles, we're not really bottlenecking on prints. Okay, so I'll go back to this, because these are the numbers that we know and love. And... So, we can make free quite a bit faster. Uh, our free algorithm is actually really poor. Kind of. Mpsych is millions of cycles, yes. Um, but yeah, this looks like it's, I think 200 is safe to say. Uh, quit. Proc CPU info. Yeah, we can uh, we could bump this up to um, can probably do this. Uh, let's do this. Ten gigs. Uh, Twelve gigs. We'll give the VM 50 gigs of RAM. Okay. Reset. Oh, that's freeing 12 gigs. Wait, how's that not failing? Did we not build it? I don't think we built it. Thank fuck. <laughs> I was about to say, my code doesn't have bugs. All right. So now we've got uh, 12 gigs per core, separate address spaces. Ooh, triple fault. Oh. I know why. I actually know why. Oh. And it's funny because the previous implementation would have caught that. Thank you for the sub, Jacob. Hell yeah. Pog champ. I'm curious how much this is going to slow this down. Uh, and in this case, we can say free. Uh, well, we asserted it's 4K. Yeah, we'll do this for verbosity. Uh, we know that that's non-zero, so we can do this dot check dad. Dot check dad powder zero. Expect uh, from raw on freeless node. We'll just do this for now. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, freeless node uh, checked add the size of that. Oh, and that'll get end. We are off by one byte technically here, but that's fine. We'll we'll fix that. Um, 
the end is free list node uh, minus one. Quite frankly, we know it's 4K. So we're just going to do this. Um, Patter dot zero dot checked add 4096 dot uh, 4095. We'll do this, 4096 minus 1. So it's a little bit more obvious. It's hard to see a 5 versus a 6. It, it'd be pretty easy to like glance past that and read it as 4096 when it's actually 4095. Um, take the physical address, checked at that. That'll get the end. And then if it is assert that that is less than the physical window base. So we're going to see how much performance we're going to lose here. Um, cool. So that's failing, which is great. And now let's go to, we were doing four gigs before. That's the number we know. If this doesn't have a significant performance slowdown, then I'm going to keep that check. Yeah, that doesn't look like that really affected performance at all, to be honest. So, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now we can go to 12 gigs. We can do this test, the large 12 gig Reno. Great physical address, blah, blah, blah. Not very happy. Outside a window. Yeah, and to fix that, we'll go into um, shared core rex. Uh, oh, this is boot, boot, boot stuff. Uh, we'll make the window 64 gigabitos. And now basically anything that does fizz adder, this does physical adder. Uh, pretty much anything that's working with fizz adders is actually going to validate the, that it's inside the window. Um, it's actually pretty awesome, to be honest. Yeah, here's our translate. Yep. Pretty fucking cool. I like to do num plus one. Yeah, for s same reason. Yep. Is this... Is this 16 gigs? Or 12... These are 12 gig? 12 gig ones? Wow, that variance. Probably got something rescheduled or something. It was stable at the start. Dude, I have no idea how people use fucking VMs, man. The fact that cloud exists blows my goddamn mind when even on a local machine I can't get even fucking remotely consistent numbers. <laughs> so weird, man. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, it's about a factor of four in that range. God, so annoying. I don't think I'm swapping. Oh, we're pretty close. We're at 56 out of 63. But yeah, we shouldn't really be swapping. Most are just serving web pages, not exactly high perf. Yeah, I know. I know. So you can dynamically scale up your shit. I know. I will say, I will say cloud actually makes people write shittier code because the fact that they can click buttons and have more cores causes them to just write the shittiest stuff and add cores until it uh, no longer is hitting workload issues. I remember you saying I want this to be so deterministic I have the control on the exact number of instructions. Is that even realistic? Yeah, it's it's relatively realistic on, on physical hardware. Um, yeah, I could, uh, 
I could try and get this running on real hardware just to see if it's more consistent. Let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, switch one of my servers over to this network. Be right back. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we can do here. I gotta configure my network for this. Um, uh, yeah, I don't have that. Fuck. Uh, Okay, so I got to configure my router to give the DHCP uh, the, I need to configure my DHCP server to give the boot name and then what's my IP? It should be fixed. It is. Okay, so we're going to boot, uh, what is the file we're booting? Uh, chocolate milk dot boot save okay that has been applied so we should be able to uh, fuck what is the 
I always forget the IPMI tool command. It's uh, IPMI tool um, I LAN plus H. Uh, wow, two birds are like chasing each other outside. It's super cool. Okay, uh, <laughs> H. What the fuck is this? Uh, U admin P. Guessing admin. Uh, sol activate. Uh, oh, this is, uh, <laughs> we got it. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna reboot that server quick. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll put it in a more deterministic mode. So <laughs> leaking creds. Uh oh. Uh oh. Leak. Power on server, nice. So this is one of my CP research servers. Uh, it's pretty weak, I think it's a quad core. I don't know how much RAM. Probably 16 gigs, maybe eight gigs. Uh, we can try and get this booting on the... The Phi might not be able to bring all the cores online because of, uh, I think I have to use the X2A pick if I want to bring all the cores online. Nice. We're in. We're in. Sometimes this fucks up if I have a full screen terminal. Uh, let's go into the setup here. Fuck, I forget the command that they use. Okay, we got it. Um, Okay, so this is a Xeon E3-1240, 37 gigahertz. I'm just gonna say that this is 3.7 gigahertz. I'm just gonna make note of that, so don't forget. Uh, 3.7 gigahertz. Okay. Um, spread spectrum off, hyperthreading off, all cores online, boost performance. Um, Max non-perform, uh, non-turbo, no C states, uh, NX enabled, VTX enabled, uh, hardware prefetch enabled, uh, JSON cache line prefetch, uh, speed step is off, turbo boost is off, uh, thermal throttling off, and uh, machine check interrupts, C states, okay, cool. So that is in a great shape. Uh, DRM frequency auto. Okay, this looks really good. Okay, we didn't make any changes, so it doesn't really matter, but... Okay, so this should boot uh, right into our kernel. And what is it doing? Oh, shit. It's using, like, a lot of RAM right now. Let's say uh, one for now. And we might have to do some averaging. This is actually going to be over uh, kind of like a serial port. Let's see, and I definitely have PIX enabled. Hopefully I have the right Ethernet port plugged in. I might have I might have done Pixie on the wrong port, but we'll see. How long does it take to post? Uh, relatively long. Um, it's like 30 seconds or something on this. It's not too bad. Let 
Nice. Fail to download the kernel over TFTP. Okay. Uh, so that got into that stage and... Okay. So, question is what stage that failed? Um, I don't think I'm really pushing the limits of Pixie here. I think I'm pretty careful with that. So we're gonna add a bunch of prints. Uh, it's probably a BIOS bug or something. Um, pretty common that things don't work on hardware because uh, you basically have to make your stuff no longer strict and you have to make it relaxed because uh, typically what you get from the BIOS is trash. Um, so you can't really be as strict as we're potentially being here. So it's great. It's great how that works. <laughs> uh, bootloader pixie uh, sh source pixie. And we're going to try and print a couple different things and see where we potentially fail. Um, uh, print uh, found pixie. Uh, print checksum valid. That's on the pixie env. Uh, we'll say pix env. Check some valid print. Uh, pixie check some valid. I wonder if it's this. That is according to the spec, but that seems pretty aggro. Uh, CS good. Uh, we definitely didn't get to that stage, so, all right, let's try this. All right, we're going to have to wait for it to post again. We still fit. Um, once you have one, a couple prints, you're kind of good forever on prints. It's kind of typically how it works. You get your you get your foot in the door, and you've paid you've paid the like one time code cost for the format and some of the print macros and stuff. And now we wait. Mr. Love Pickle, thank you for the prime. I think I missed that. Thank you so much. See us good. Filled a download over TFTP. Okay, that means uh, we were unable to actually get the ACK packet. Um, you know what? That's probably too small. I think that's it. I think we're good. I think that I think that uh, packet buffer was too small for a, a real uh, real network packet. DCP packets are they have like a 150 byte file name, some shit in them, relatively large. Uh, uh, DCP. Protocol. They have a couple like really. They have a like, 64 byte buffer and a yeah 192 oct octets of that shit. So minimum a DHP packet is like uh, 192. It's like 200 some bytes, and we were given out 128 bytes to hold that. Uh, it's probably working because iPixie we were actually statically booting, so it probably made like a fake. Uh, fake just the header of it, but in our case, uh, we need a, a full packet now, so we gave it 512 bytes now. Okay, and that's uh, apparently not the issue. Uh, 
We're not getting the IP, so that's a problem. I'm gonna take a look in uh, Sushi Roll, and maybe I'm not using ACK packets on those. So what do we do here? Yeah, we use an ACK packet. Packet type two. Oh! I think it tells you where it is. In which case, I don't know how that was working, to be honest. Um, I think it tells you where that packet is. So we'll do that. We'll do a request. Status is zero. Everything's zero, effectively. Um, let's check the pixie spec quick. Uh, get in those undies. Let's take a check here. I want get cached. Get cached info of storage to be filled in. If they were set to zero, this will contain the segment offset in the BC data segment. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess we're going to do that. <laughs> Fucking weird, man. So we're going to convert this segment offset into that and I'm guessing I'm guessing this version doesn't copy like look at that. <laughs> you can pass it in and it will be filled in maximum number of bytes to be copied in. If they were 0 <laughs> um if buffer size and buffer are both set to 0 it will contain the amount of data stored in the BC data segment. So apparently this pixie um implementation doesn't adhere to that spec. Uh it only handles the zero case which is uh, pretty fucking standard. So, welcome to uh welcome to the world of working with actual hardware. Uh often is ass. Um Those ones we definitely give it buffers, but this one it might yeah, this will give us an existing pointer. And in this case, we're going to grab the um let packet buff is equal to uh, core slice from raw parts. And this will be seg off to linear. Yep. Seg off to linear. And then we'll give it the uh, st.buffer seg, st.buffer offset. And then as const u8 and then the size will be st dot buffer size uh, and that's going to be as a u size so that'll give us the packet buff and then we'll grab the same bytes out of it and we'll uh we'll see if this works okay um there we go so let's see if this works locally and it does. Looks great. So now let's get this working remote. Welcome to hardware. <laughs> hardware doesn't match spec. Good old days. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, God, you're still here. What's up, Meta? How are you doing? How far are we? Uh, we did some fancy shit, actually. Um, good morning. Uh, yeah, so we, we made our virtual memory allocator about four times faster than it was, uh, by implementing a free list. 
Uh, we implemented the ability to free virtual memory of arbitrary ranges, and it will delete the pages if they are no longer used. Um, there are a lot of crazy things that we did that were pretty huge. Made a better free list, implemented free, implemented uh, all of our virtual memory routines, our Alex and Freeze. There we are. Uh, we're running on hardware now. <clears throat> okay, so in this case, I do think we are uh, bottlenecking on prints at this stage. Um, yeah, so a lot of... <laughs> A lot of OS dev projects, when you move it to hardware, it takes like days to get it to work on hardware. Uh, but I'm pretty careful about doing things that are really hardware specific. So just other than that one bug, which was arguably not my fault, um, here we are up and running. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, and let's do some averaging of these. So we'll do... Um, Uh, let me elapsed is equal to 0 to 64, uh, 4, eh. Uh, total. And let me iters is equal to OU64. Iters plus equals this, and this will be total. This is just benchmarking, so this code doesn't matter in terms of code quality. Iters plus equals one. If total is greater than 10 billion, we're gonna print the elapsed, and then we'll do uh, iters is zero, total is zero. We'll free every iteration, but this will limit us to print every like two and a half seconds. Honestly, let's let's like print every. Who fucking cares? Uh, elapsed. Um, and this is psych per iter. This will be total as f64 divided by iters as f64, and then we'll have uh, cycles per iter. And then we reset the iters in the total. So it'll kind of track this time in that window. And this should print every, on this machine, it'll print every about eight seconds. So we'll guarantee that uh, we definitely are not hitting issues on um, the print serial port limitations, which is pretty bad over IPMI. Even though it's over the network, uh, IPMI just, Typically is really slow for a lot of things. Thanks again for all the follows. Hell yeah. Intel specs are pretty good. Yeah. Okay, those look great. So we have some numbers. Those look like averages. One of them's taking its time. Does it have a slow interface with the serial port? I'm not sure, it's kind of weird. I don't know why that one's 29. Really don't. Okay, four cores online. This is on hardware. With no hyper threading. Print one spot instead of new lining. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to get that output to be useful when we have multiple cores. I am surprised with the amount of variance on these. That was the first pass. 8677 again. And then 54-ish. Here it comes, 54, calling it. There's a pattern here. Yeah, 53. 
Um, it's very interesting. 92, 86, 77, 53. Here we have a... See, here we don't have a pattern. <laughs> but here we do, right? Every single time we're going to get the same descending pattern. It's just... I don't know why it's that shape. Oh, there we got some interleaved. Okay. I wonder what, what is causing that. We are accessing a lot of memory. We are hitting the memory bus. It's not necessarily fair to all the cores. You're not counting free? Yeah. My free implementation and my free implementation is pretty slow. Are the cores fighting over locks? They shouldn't have any contention on any locks. It's interesting. Hmm. Since you're not counting free, your perf uh, counting could be good. Overall loop could be slow. Yeah, I mean, I, I know my free is slow. Alright, I'm gonna shut down that machine. Okay, and then here we'll set this to uh, 5. What about my RAM speeds? Are any inconsistent? No, they aren't. So I'm I'm guessing one of the cores is getting favorability on the memory accesses, which is really interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. So if I do this, right? If I map uh, five twelve, actually we'll go to uh, we'll do sixteen k. So we're mapping 16K, and we're going to see what this looks like. Um, ooh. Oh, yep. <laughs> Got to change this. Thank God. It's like, man, is that a bug? No. No, just my fault. Okay. Wow. There's still one that's significantly different. 13. Okay, that is very strange. That is very strange. Why would that be happening? I was not expecting it at this at this size. It's pretty bizarre. They cut the corners badly in the clean room. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of the cores just got a little bit, just a, it's just 2x uh, worse. Okay, let's take a look here at what we do in our kernel mm. Here's where we uh, grab locks, potentially. This is on global allocator. We shouldn't be hitting that. free lock and uh, bulk lock the free list is a local lock uh, print free to free mem Print 
page table lock. Okay, pretty much everywhere that we take a lock now we print. Yeah, we just we, we don't we don't acquire any locks. In fact, um Yeah, there's just, there's no locking going on. It's really weird. I don't know what's causing that. Power management? I don't think so, because I turn all that off on the hardware side of things. Did he literally make a print statement whenever there's a lock and there were no locks? Yeah. That, I mean, that's how I designed it, right? I designed it to have no locks. That's why, that's why we made all that fancy perf stuff. Uh, and let me get rid of those prints here in uh, Pixie. Get status. Uh, get diff bootloader source Pixie. Bootloader source Pixie print. Uh, get diff. Perfect. Just change those. Much better. Um. It's really strange. Let me try it on real hardware and let me update this to be uh, eight. So you have some sig figs and I'll boot up that server. And we'll see if hardware can reproduce that effect. I just find it interesting that one is so far off. But it's it's pretty weird. I think I think one course just getting the short end of the stick. Um I would suspect what's probably happening here. We're about to uh, be live on, on hardware. Yeah, there's one that's... That is so bizarre. Can you print the core ID? Absolutely. I'm stupid. Put that on a new line so I remember it's there. Whoa. Okay, there we go.
It's always three. The last one to come online. That's the core ME is talking with. <laughs> Add a semaphore and uh, have them all start the loop at the same time. Yeah, maybe when one starts to get to free, it starts to thrash a little bit. I mean, I, here, I'll put free in the mix, right? Uh, don't look at this perf. It's really bad when we free. <clears throat> but this might add the consistency. Nope. Three's still crushing it. Let's, uh... Let's just do single core. And is that the good number? Yep, that's the good number. So there's just contention. <sighs> okay. So we're still grabbing a lock locally, right? We still grab a lock for the local core um, table. Let's take a look at uh, kernel page. Uh, split shared lock cell source. And let's uh, let's destrict these a little bit. This is a little dangerous. Nope. So it's not that. There's just memory contention with bias distribution. Yeah. That's that sounds pretty accurate. Um You know, these numbers are pretty much largely descending. I would suspect that the the last core has less overlap. So like the first core starts going, the second core starts going third, and then the fourth core has the least amount of overlap. Uh, free must be like, basically one of the cores is getting away from the pack and probably spending, yeah. Um, static uh, release. Atomic. Yeah, I think you're right there. And let's revert this. Uh, we're going to uh, create this release. Second, of course, the cycling zero to three and flipping to zero. Yeah, um, while uh, ticket is equal to atomic uh, release fetch. Add one while ticket, uh, while release load ordering sequentially consistent. It's not equal to four. So this will still have them staggered by a pretty decent amount. Uh, so we need to up the size of this. We'll do a gig. 
the latency from core to core on memory access is about 50 cycles. Uh, so they would be staggered. Even with this, they're still going to be staggered about 50 cycles or so. Um, so we're going to fetch add one here. It's sequentially consistent. We don't actually need this ticket. We can throw it in the trash. Uh, while this is not equal to four... Uh, loop once all four have checked in uh, Then we do some shit and then we'll just say release dot store. It's a race to get here, but it um, doesn't really matter uh, Actually we can do uh, Fetch I don't know if there's a fetch sub. I don't think there is Okay, there is uh, Fetch sub release that so They'll all add here. There is a race here, but this takes a significant amount of time that no one's going to get to here to subtract before someone gets released. So they're going to all add up here. Once it's uh, equal to four, they'll all come through. And then here we'll subtract it down. That'll reset it back to zero. And we'll do the shit. Nope. One's still quite, quite a bit ahead. Wow. Wow. And it's always the last core that got brought online. I wonder if it got like a much more favorable stack or something. I I actually really wonder if the um It seems to always be the last core that came online. So we're going to say if core not ID is equal to three CPU halt. We're going to stop the third core and we're going to see if another one takes over. As the as the winner, if that is the case. Uh, oh, that's going to never make it past this. Hey, that proves that our code works there. You know, these are pretty damn close. Wow. Wow. Okay, so uh, I don't think we need this. This doesn't do anything in this case. Um, so what we can do is I'm gonna I'm gonna have the memory state be the same. I'm gonna halt this afterwards. This will cause it to that core will come through and do one iteration, which will cause the memory and everything to be consumed in the same way. And nope, that doesn't seem to do it. So we'll release this. And how much further ahead was this? Dude, that bird keeps running into the window. I don't get it. I don't understand. It's been like this for the past week and a half. It's probably the same bird. I don't know what it's trying to do. Honestly, I would say that these are all kind of the same. Well, 274. Let's uh let's get this one on hardware. I do like this test. Open the window, let the bird in. What's the XP gain on cooking that bird? <laughs> So weird.
Like, I, I really don't know what it would be. Save and check the link. I mean, it's Silicon Glow. Ooh. I'll bookmark that. Come on. Let's boot. There we go. Yeah, three's ahead here. It's running 320s when the others are doing like 370s, 380s. Is that something I have control over? Other than them getting like a more favorable core local location, or maybe getting more favorable physical memory, Can you cycle it from three back to one or one instead of jumping to the zero core? What do you mean? Cycle it three back to one. They're just printing whenever they win the race, whenever, whenever they get to that uh, five billion Three. What happens if you use five cores? I bet it's just the 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 fourth one wins. And I'll I'll put this back to twenty thousand. Just to be friendlier to my computer, and we'll go up to six. These will now get effectively exclusive physical cores. Yeah, the fifth one is uh, quite a bit ahead. Fifth one's running 230s. All the others are running like two, 290s to 330s. Uh, it means uh, change the lock to wait for all four to complete. That's what I previously had, right? When I when I initially wrote that, that's what it previously did. Oh, like. Oh, do you mean like literally have them mutex? Let mute foop is equal to lock, cell lock cell new. Uh, let lock is equal to foop lock, uh, standard, oops, um, core mem drop lock. Okay, now they won't run at the same time. Okay, now two of them are getting pretty low numbers. Yeah, I think it's just having the six in parallel is not giving like a um one of the one of the courses is just getting shafted, I think. Because now they look a lot more consistent. None of them Uh, five is consistently kind of ahead. And I can do this. Uh, loop. We'll do this.
Now they'll do the full test in isolation. Huh. Yeah, still a little bit uh, different on all of them. I don't think it's something really in our control or something that really matters, to be honest. Uh, we fix that pixie thing. Uh, we remove that test code. We added that assertion. We up the size. Git commit and fixed a bug in pixie for some pixie implementations that do not conform to the spec. You push. Okay, and let's see here. Okay, release the early stack. That's gonna write to that location. Oh, we can do um, mm write fizz ox seventy zero zero uh, o u one oops o u one one u eight. Fizz adder. And this should still work. We'll turn this server off. Why the name chocolate milk? Uh, there's a plushie that looked like chocolate milk that, um, that we named it after. That's it. That's the only reason. Okay, so that should be good. Release the early stack, initialize the locals, bring up the other cores, get status, get diff, get commit, and switch to use uh, right fizz for releasing the early stack. Get push. History C, okay. Um, all right. Is VTX enabled in, can you do nested vert in, uh, we'll go to one core, oh, force off. Can you use uh, nested vert in QMU KVM? Oops, shit. This, 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 this. Okay. There we go. One core, and let's see if we have that feature. Um, let's go look at orange slice. Uh, Oh, that's the build thing, kernel, source, main. Get CPU features. Oh, I don't have that in this implementation. Let's see if we have this. We'll add the get CPU features. Because that was actually implemented quite well. That was in CPU.RS. Uh, that's going to be in shared CPU source lib.RS. Get CPU features, actually a 
pretty cool function to have, to be honest. We'll grab this and we'll whack this in shared uh, CPU source lib paste. And we don't need the X crow X CR zero. Do we not? No, we're not using it for that. Uh, get set of CPU features. Okay. And CPU ID. Ah, I don't have that. Do I? Let's grab that quick then. Uh, paste, mark that inline on safe because it can crash if you don't use it correctly. Okay, uh, VMX not supported. Huh. Uh, Kimu KVM nested vert. No. Uh, shut down all running VMs and do that. Okay, force off. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're hacking now. Noise, noise, noise. Yoink. SP kernel source vmx.rs fn vmx uh, test. Paste D paste uh, VMX VMX test. Mod VMX. VM write, we gotta grab those. VM read and VM write. Yoink. Paste. Okay, uh, read GS, yes, uh, read all these, read CRs. Okay, we need a bunch of things from here. Alec page, write CR0. Okay, so basically all the uh, CR registers. Uh, do we just need the CRs? Yeah, I think so. This inline, inline, okay. Space this. Boom. 
Uh, read segments and read those. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna do this. This. So we have read write CR4. I'm gonna say this is a CR4 lowercase. CR4. Yoink. Paste. Whoa. Oh, we still have crow. Okay. Get rid of crow. Grab these. Uh, we're going to add a memory clobber on these. Just to make sure that all of the memory stuff has been flushed out. And we're going to do that here as well. Same here. Okay, so we pulled in VM write. That's fine. Memory Intel volatile, memory Intel volatile, memory Intel volatile, memory Intel volatile. Great. And I I can macro these. Um, uh find CR. This we're gonna have to take in a name. Uh, we're gonna have to have a read name, which is gonna be an identifier. A write, which is an identifier. And then we're gonna have a... Oh, I don't know if we can put CR4 in a string. I don't know if we can make that into a string. I'm pretty sure we can't. Uh, can cat ident? Oh, that's coming soon. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. CR4, CROG. CR4, CR2G. SCR2, CR3G. And we just need all the selector ones. Those are easy. Um, perfect. Whack these here. Inline always inline G. Uh, those memory clobbers will not matter for. Those look good. MM alloc page. Yep. And private function here. Make this pub. And then MM alloc page. Instead of MM alloc page, we're going to call... Um, are those supposed to be physical... Yeah, I think they are physical. So we will, we can actually just pop that off our free list. 67 Alec Page, uh, oops. I don't know what it expects that to be. Okay, it expects that to be a page that's uh, writable. Um, yeah, so percent s mm 
colon colon mm uh, delete go okay uh, fn alloc page and that expects that we can slice those things up so they have to be writable but then also yeah we might actually have to change these uh, cuz this kernel had an identity map and we abused the shit out of that um And pages are not zeroed by default in this kernel. I might just translate those pages. I might allocate virtual memory and then translate them. Yeah. I think that's going to be what we're going to do. Uh, so this will be vec OU8 4096. Actually, anywhere that we do an alloc page, we'll replace it with a vec OU8 4096. Okay. Three fifty one, try into, don't have it. Uh, use core convert, try into one on eight. Uh, oof. Great. Anywhere that we do as mute pointer, it's going to be fucked. This is not going to work. This probably will triple fault. Perfect. But we have those addresses, have revision number, VMX on complete. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, as pointer, none. As mute pointer, okay. So any place that we do as mute pointer, we have to replace that with uh, translate. And to do translations, we're going to have to get access to physical memory. Uh, or the page table. So we'll get a core boot args page table lock. Let's page table is equal to page table as mute unwrap. Uh, get access to the page table and then we'll be able to do translations on that. Uh, we need to make a let's um, mute pmem is equal to, this is just the marker, uh, create mm physical memory. Okay, and then uh, this will be e shared page table source lib. And let's see if we can get this going. Uh, translate. Okay, so let's meet pointer. That bird, man. VMX on pointer. Uh, oh. Let's VMX on region uh, patter is equal to um, page table dot translates meet pmem 
We're going to use the VMX on region. And we need to make a vert adder. Uh, here, we'll do this. As mute pointer as U64 unwrap dot page unwrap dot zero use page table vert adder how are you resizing the uh, Vim windows? I'm using my mouse. Page. That makes sense. Uh, so that'll get the physical address of the page if it is mapped. Okay, so in this case, this will be the VMX on region physical address, physical address. Okay. Uh, X, X for both of those. Not implemented for fizz adder. Oh, yep. Uh, here we can just do a, uh, yeah, we'll keep that as a fizz adder. We're gonna rewrite all this code. This code is very temporary. This, this entire file is gonna go in the trash. Just a heads up. Um, then we're going to write in those bytes. Okay. So basically any place that we do as meet pointer, VMX uh, pointer page, we're gonna do that here. Pointer page, VMX on pointer page, convert that to fizz adder. This is now an X, patter dot zero, pointer page patter zero. Okay, I'm gonna make a VMCS region. Uh, VMCS region. Patter dot zero. Patter dot zero. We haven't made one for the pointer page yet. So this will be the pointer page. Are we doing EPT here? I think we are. Uh, VMCS region, uh, VMCS pointer page. Uh, 100, oh, under patter, dot zero. Okay, we have as mute pointer. These are all during the actual physical lookups. Okay. Here we're gonna do uh, PDPT. Patter is going to be equal to PDPT patter dot zero EPT root. Oh, we do that here. EPT root. This code is shit. I I know. Uh, EPT root as mute. And then this will be uh, EPT root uh, patter. This is just very, very temporary. Okay, done. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> misclick twice. Struggling, man. That keyboard, that mouse accuracy. Wow. Um, 
set, activate. Where are we getting stuck? Uh, v VMXE. Set this. I don't think we're failing these translations, are we? Oh yeah, we're not, uh... well, we, we hit that set, print elect. Oh, we deadlocked. Um... Triple fault. Uh, okay. VMX on is failing. Um, so here's where it's really difficult. Is this an issue with Kimu or with this code? And I mean, I would assume that it's, I don't think I need to be enlightened of Make sure all of these are correct. Region, pointer page, region, do we reallocate those? No, those are, okay, those are different. VMX on, VMX on pointer page. Region patter, pointer page, UPT root, PDPT. Oh. Get the revision number. I wonder if I have to be like slightly aware of, let's see if this works on hardware. I don't know if it will. Um, we, d we did just hack up this code without really paying attention to what we did. Um, but we should be setting the mandatory bits and everything. I think I've tested this code on hardware, so uh, either we broke something, very likely, um, probably should read the code to figure out what it's trying to do. Well, VMX on shouldn't be failing. Uh, we might have triple faulted. I think we did. Okay. Nice. Because we, we print stuff after that. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure we triple faulted. It just hasn't gotten to the point where the reboot has reset this terminal yet. 
but I would suspect that triple faulted. Which is cool because it uh, triple faulted in the same location, which is good. Unless it's deadlocked or stuck. Yeah, it's about to transition into... Yeah, it's about to switch into VMAX. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's... I mean, this, this might... Yeah... Hmm. Uh, enable the VMX extensions. Unless these are not supposed to be physical, but I think they are. Uh... Copy that into there. VMX on. Yeah, what's going on here? Write in the revision number. Copy in physical address in the pointer page. We zeroed everything out. So those are all the fixed things that are required to be set up and they look reasonable. Fixed one, all Fs. Two thousand. Yeah, these look pretty much the same. Okay. So writing the CRs was fine. The problem happens when you do a VMX on. And we give it the pointer page physical address. Okay, let's check the manual. Um, VMX on. Yep. Ooh. Is the lock bit clear? Or lock bit is not set. Okay, so the lock bit's set. We're not an SMX operation, or we're outside of it. And bit two. Feature control is clear. I feel like you struggle with setting up a VM every time. Yeah, because it's uh, it's miserable. <laughs> it's a incredibly bad API. It's a it's a terrible API. It really is. It's the stupidest thing. Um. So these bits could be invalid. Uh. Memory sources out of there. Execute in A20M mode. If it's outside of those segments, if that has an unusable segment, if it's an execute only segment, if that doesn't support uh, VMX in the current processor mode, if a page fault occurs, what? How can a page fault occur in accessing that? You know what? 
the operand of this is a four kilobyte aligned physical address. Why the fuck would this instruction generate a page fault if it's a physical address? I bet this documentation is wrong. I bet this is a virtual address to a page which contains a physical address. The, the operand of this instruction is a 4 kilobyte aligned physical address, the VMX on pointer, that references the VMX on region. Um, yeah, if the address is not 4K aligned or any of those bits, okay, okay, wait, that's the contents, oh yeah, that's the contents of the in-memory source operand, is that derefing it or not? God damn it. Fuck off. What a piece of shit. This is the... The VMX on pointer. Blah, 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 all this shit. VMCS. That's the VMCS region. And what have we done so far? We haven't done any VMCS related stuff yet. No, we have. The VMX on pointer page the VMX on pointer page we're gonna take the all right we're gonna try this there you go happy happy birthday it is it is now VMX on complete. You fucking kidding me? That's a virtual address. God damn, this documentation sucks so bad. <laughs> Fuck you. The operand of this is a 4K aligned physical address. Well, if you give it a physical address, it will fucking crash. It takes the contents of the 64-bit uh, thing, and then it checks to see if it's in the physical address with. And also, this instruction can generate a page fault. I recognize they're saying M64. <sighs> Fuck this. I bet it doesn't even need to be 4K aligned. <laughs> I bet it doesn't even need to be 4K, it doesn't even need to be 4K aligned. It probably just has to be a fucking reference to memory that contains a physical address. Oh my god. I bet, I bet this VM pointer load, oh, I bet this needs to be, uh, this probably needs to be a virtual address. About to launch VM. Okay. Well, we made it further. <laughs> oh, what else do we got here? We got some other physical pointers. Using Guess Crow. Oh, let's see. Uh, uh, 
ab about to launch the VM, and here we're gonna VM write, uh, and the host rip. Oh, are we assuming that we wrote some shit to that location in memory? Six, sixy, sixy, one, six. Save the host rip, uh, VM launch, and this is going to start execution. Uh, RIP 8100. Ooh, uh, so we put something at 8100 that is our... Yeah, we just gotta put some code at 8100. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> Base, uh, bootloader, uh, source, stage zero. Um, oh my god, that's literally where I put our fucking kernel. Uh, honestly, oh, 8,000, we can't put it there. Uh, honestly, a really good spot to me seems like 7,500. Oh, we, we won't have that. We'll say like 7-F-O-O. -O. Okay. Uh, bits 16 move d uh zor di di move esdi uh oops move di xb800 xor di di move cs cx uh 80 move ax ox of 41 rep uh stows word cli halt Okay, so that's going to be our application. That's going to be at 7F00, physical memory. I think we identity map the uh, the VM. Oh, that's dying. Okay. Um, I think we, yeah. Definitely trying to put that into... Real mode. A row of eight. I didn't recompile. I, I think I did. Oh my god. I didn't. Did I really not? Oh my god. No. No. Well, let's see if we're getting A's. Yeah, it doesn't look like we ever get A's. Okay, uh, sysenter, these are all cons, set up all these for the host, yep, that's what it's going to restore, set the TR to that, VM launch, save the host rip, uh, 1F, uh, yeah, that's rip rel, save that. Okay, yeah, we save the RSP and we save RIP, such that we resume execution at that location with that RIP once we exit the VM. Um, I don't know, let's take a look at what this was putting there. Maybe I was... Let's see... I don't know, it looks like I'm probably having that execute in real mode, but I need to double check that I'm not, we're going to rewrite all this code, don't worry. <laughs> oh, um, that's actually going to put it into, yeah, this is absolutely booting in the current address space, 100%. Uh, we're, P uh, PDPE, EPT, uh, I am using unrestricted guest and EPT.
but I think that's running 64-bit. I think that's running a 64-bit with a identity mapped EPT space. Uh, yeah, because I give it uh, guess CR3. Oh, I don't give it a CR3. So it should be in real mode. Let's take a look at what Orange Slice is doing. This is going to be in the bootloader. We'll hack some shit in. Stage zero. And let's take a look at where we're at here. Um, this is at AU100. This is the VM entry. Yeah, it should be 16-bit, uh, real mode. 7F00. And in this case, it was 8100, and we do that shit. In this case, we're going to do a... Uh, let's try it on hardware. Um, and what do we do there? CLI halt. Yeah, we just halt forever. So, given I didn't commit something that didn't work... 7F00. That is at that location. Be 100. We'll do clear direction flags and stuff too here. Clear interrupts just in case. I mean, that's all going to be cleared because we set that up. I mean, it's close. It feels close. Okay. Uh, how the fuck do I look at my screen now? Uh... This stuff never works. Um, Java, JDK, 11. That sounds good. Um, Java, Java, Java C. Downloads, J. Jviewer. What do you use to run a JNLP? Oh, I should go into Jerry. Lib. Where's the Jerry at? Java C, yeah, that's not the right one. Uh, here, Java, Java Wiss, downloads, J Viewer. Guarantee you this shit doesn't work. Never fucking does. Never does. IPMI is like the most fucked thing. I might have already whitelisted this. Uh, yes. Oh my god, we. Oh, and it crashed. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that sounds about right. Um, pretty accurate to the experience. <sighs> that's expected. <laughs> Yeah, so we're gonna try um, IP my tool or IP my view. This one uses a modified version of. Um, oh, here we go. Here it comes back. Is that because I have this running?
Oh, this one doesn't allow me to view the console. Okay, great. Um, so, ah, oh, my fucking god. Like, I don't know how you make Java unreliable. It's actually pretty impressive, to be honest. But it's because they use HTTPS, and then their certs expire, and then they never release new firmware, and then Java never lets you connect into their MD5 uh, web server, so all this shit breaks. So then you have to, like, set up all of these fucking bypasses and, like, turn off all these security zones. Only one virtual console session is allowed. Yeah. Uh, okay, does that mean it's running somewhere in the background? Hidden. Let me check. Uh, PSA Xgrep Java. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it it was running. Somewhere somewhere on the computer it was running. This is just kind of how it works. I don't think I've ever connected in to a uh IPMI session and things work. Upgrade to Redfish. What's Redfish? Yes. Oh, yeah, invalid session token. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so to fix this issue, I have to re-download it, um, and that'll, that'll fix that problem. So there, I just downloaded a new one, and now we wait again. <laughs> Here we go. Like, how do you fuck this up? So, it just... It, the problem is none of these things. It, they run VNC, but they customize VNC, so you can't VNC into the server. It's, like, literally the most fucked up stuff. There are my A's. So, we got execution of a real mode virtual machine. Oh, my fucking god. I'm very happy to see those A's. I'm also a little tilted. But we did get the A's. <laughs> what is even why? I, to I told you, you, you just do it a couple different times. Redfish replaces IPMI, but it's still IPMI compliant. Do you have to like flash that onto the server? How do you, how do, you do that? God, that that might be the most the best thing I've ever seen before. The server's screaming. Ah! So I I wonder if um nested vert doesn't support unrestricted mode. I would I would suspect that um you have to flash it. Hardware provider should have a download for it. Okay. Try restricted mode. <laughs> I mean... Oh, yeah, and then it just randomly moves as well. That's one of the features of Java. Here, we'll put it here, and then we'll just wait. It'll just uh, decide at some point that it just wants to go to the other side. Um... Every once in a while, it just checks in. It's like, let's move the window. So, it's all the, it's all the fancy features that we get with uh, IPMI. <laughs> oh, my God. So, what we can do... Um, oh, it's if you hover over it. I see. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> okay, uh, anyways, so, uh, 
this would allow us to boot our uh, uh, an OS directly in this environment, which is pretty cool. Um, so we did, in theory, get a, a hypervisor running already in this kernel. That's great. So a uh, couple days work. How do you fuck up a UI so hard? It's great. It's great. And look at all these. Aren't these great? Oh, look at that. Mmm. Pow! An active uh. Active uh. And hell. <laughs> Nothing works with DWM. Eh. I don't have too many problems with things with DWM. This is a this is these are pretty catastrophic failures of making a UI. <laughs> hell, hell. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, so. I'm gonna shut down that server. Um, and what are we gonna do here? Um. Yeah, so this is allow use of uh, paging disabled, and this. Yeah. I don't know if it will allow that. So what what you can do with uh, uh, VTX is you can actually just boot directly into like a 64-bit space. Um, so I could write like a Linux bootloader that would load up uh, Linux and then we could jump directly into Linux and kind of skip the whole real mode side of things. And then that theoretically would work inside of uh, uh, this environment. So this will definitely support the um, this will definitely support the restricted mode uh, if it's making it this far. I'm guessing that we are probably dropping to a level that it doesn't allow us to support. Because we're trying to run real mode, uh, which is a relatively like iffy feature in a lot of hypervisors. Um, so uh, what we can actually do is uh, we can just set up a guest that just uses a CR3. So we can actually abuse the fact that we can make a, an arbitrary page table that's not being used. <laughs> Funny coincidence that it was developed that way. <laughs> um, we can actually build a CR3 and set up a 64-bit guest and just arbitrarily start uh, executing. And at that point, we're really just using VTX as an atomic transition into a new CR3 with a new uh, RSP and a new RIP. So it's like an atomic transition into a different address space with... Uh, a different stack and different execution points. So it allows us to like have a completely isolated uh, page table with only that set up. So uh, what I think we'll do probably on the next stream is uh, we're gonna rewrite all this code, right? Because this code sucks. Um, and quite frankly, I'm not even gonna commit these diffs that I added. Uh, because I'm probably going to reset all these, and then we'll go and re-implement these things based on if we actually think we need them or not. Um, and that, that'll, that'll allow us... Uh, we'll rewrite all of this to run a 64-bit process, so we'll be able to create an arbitrary uh, space, an ad arbitrary address space, map in, I don't know, an L for a PE, and begin execution of it, and that'll allow us to kind of run something in that environment. Uh, we could hook... Uh, when the syscall instruction gets executed, and then that would allow us to implement some syscalls, so we could uh, we could fake out something. We could probably get something like we could probably get a lot of Linux applications up and running. We just have to implement like I don't know, probably like six or seven different syscalls. Can you commit on a different branch? Get uh, um tick. Oops. Status, get checkout, B, um, VTX test, get status, get add, uh, get add kernel, get commit, am a shitty 
BTX test, uh, this code will ultimately be uh, nuked. Get push, uh, get log, get push, cool. All right. Get checkout master, get pull. Okay, so I should be able to edit this and it won't exist. Okay, cool, good. All right, we'll close all these things. Okay, so that's pushed up. <laughs> Only syscall I care about is write, maybe mmap. Yeah, so we probably could get uh, an application running and then we can do differential resets. Uh, I think the next stream, the goal would be to get a very basic guest working in a hypervisor uh, and then basically doing a um, honestly like a hypervisor is kind of overkill for this the fact that we can't run unrestricted mode kind of sucks because um, I really wanted to start working on booting like Linux in this so what we might have to do is we might have to implement soft reboots, which is a, a feature that I have in pretty much all of my kernels that allows me to instantaneously reboot the kernel by jumping to the reset vector. Um, or not the reset vector, but the entry point of the bootloader, which will reset everything and tear everything down. So we init all the cores, turn them all off, disable any drivers if we enabled any drivers, and then we jump into the... Um, the bootloader entry and that will re-download a new kernel, reinitialize all the globals and everything, and then it'll take literally two to five milliseconds to boot our kernel and we don't have to wait for the system to post. And then with that model, we'll be able to do rapid development on a real system. And then we don't have to deal with the restrictions of KVM or whatever. Um, that being said, I would like to look a little bit more into the restrictions of KVM and see if we can work around them because uh, that is a pretty big value add. If I if I develop this and it only runs on bare metal hardware, it's a lot less useful than if you can run it on any machine that supports nested vert. So, but that's something that I'll uh, get to next stream. But I think this is it for this stream. It's a pretty solid stream, I think. Thanks for everyone following. This is the most viewers I've ever fucking had uh, by a pretty large margin. And I seem to be retaining, if not growing, viewers, which is fucking nuts. So thanks, everyone, for stopping by. I hope you've had a lot of fun. Go check out the project. Uh, try it out. Try and build a kernel. Play around with it. You can just use Rust vectors and everything. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so, yeah. That's what we have. So I'm going to spend the next, like hour uh, probably editing and start kicking off the uploads of these videos such that they'll be uploaded and then I think I'm gonna try to do a premiere of these on YouTube such that they I think if I schedule a time for it to go up it'll like prioritize and make sure that they're ready for that premiere so typically YouTube doesn't let you premiere same day or even like next day uh, but it will hopefully force YouTube to like have it ready at a certain time so, Docs, thank you for the, thank you for the sub. Hell yeah. Um, next time stream at a good time for East Coast and Europe. Yeah, that's going to be difficult. First time watching, it was great to watch. I'll be back for sure. That's amazing. I'd love to hear that. We've had so many people stopping by. So many viewers. It's, it's nuts. I remember when... Uh, live Overflow, when I was doing, like, Maple Story hacks, Live Overflow, uh, it was right when Ghidra came out, and I was doing a stream using, like, uh, Ghidra to reverse engineer Maple Story to make cheats, and Live Overflow, like, sent me a follower, like, sent people my way, and I had, like, 100 viewers for, like, 15 seconds, <laughs> until it went back to, like, the, the 20 or 30 and it's really cool that I have gotten more viewers than I've ever had before, and it's organic. Uh, no one has sent me. No one has sent me a host. I don't think this stream. No one has gotten redirected here, kind of by force due to a raid. It just seems like people are showing up and enjoying the content. 
It's fucking awesome. Yeah, when I got banned from Twitch. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I got banned from Twitch. I had to panic. Set up my stream on YouTube quick. <laughs> I came from Live Overflow. That's awesome. I love to hear that. And thank you for all the follows, everyone. We're actually... Probably after this stream, I think this means our average viewers have been high enough such that we will cross into the ability to apply for partner and we'll be Twitch partners, which will be fucking weird. Um, and then we'll uh, make some emotes and different things. I have no idea what we'll make for emotes. I think I'll probably do a stream where we like go into designing and picking out what people would like for emotes and we'll just kind of go with what people want. I like how I show followers but not subs. Do subs not show up on there? Really? Are you sure? I think you're pulling my chain. Streamlabs, uh, let me check. When you're a partner, I don't think you can cross stream to YouTube. That is true. So I will look into that and see if that's an issue. But I don't think it will be, to be honest. Um, let me see here. Alright. Task to sub. Oh yeah, the subs don't show up. Why the fuck doesn't that show up? I bet the URL changed for that. Oh, no, that did show up. It was just massively delayed. <laughs> Anyways, I think I'm going to call it here. Thanks everyone for stopping by. See you all around.